Welcome everyone to the Heroes of the Pants, Heroes of the Storm Finals. This is a tournament featuring many members of the Frog Pants community. I am Garrett Weinzerl. I will be casting today along with my co-host from Into the Nexus, Kyle Ferguson. Kyle, how you doing today? Hello everybody, I'll be the cameraman. Yeah, you'll also, I'm sure you'll be talking and telling us how wrong we are about certain things because you're just too knowledgeable not to, uh, not to talk. I'm just going to let you guys go and laugh. <laughs> Please don't mute yourself when you're laughing, though. I want to just have the guy laughing in the background like it's some kind of morning zoo or something. That'd be wonderful. Also joining us today is the founder of Frog Pants, this tournament, and also a competitor in this tournament, Mr. Scott Johnson. Scott, hey! Former competitor in this tournament. We got our butts handed to us on a platter not long ago. It was a very depressing day, and uh, I don't want to ever talk. I'm just kidding. I can talk about it all you want, but we lost fair and square, and that's fine, and that means good things for me because I get to come hang out with you guys and watch the actual finals from the actual good players in our tournament. Now, Scott, I mean, if, you are, if you're the one that's putting on the tournament, though, can't you technically call yourself whatever you want? If you want to call yourself Victor, mm. uh, you could. I mean... I'm more like, okay, so here's how this, this, this whole thing went. I had this bright idea early on that I thought it'd be fun to do a tournament in and around the community. So yay for me, right? Good idea. Let's do it. I made a little logo-y thing, and we all got together, and we decided to do it. And then I went, yeah, but I don't have time or resources to actually do what it takes to organize such a thing. So your next guest is maybe the guest of honor as far as I'm concerned because without his hard work, sweat, and tears, there was no Hero of the Pants tournament. So I'll let you take that from there. Yeah, also joining us is another player from the tournament and the organizer of this event, Mr. Gorath. Hey, Gorath, Hello. how you doing? How you doing, Mr. Garrett? I'm doing, I'm doing good. <laughs> I'm super happy to be here. I'm Mr. Gorath to all you people in the chat room and all you people listening. Mr. Respect. Gorath. That sounds like a scary neighbor to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You don't want to grow up and become Mr. Gorath. Uh -oh. You don't have a lot of friends, I guess. <laughs> but uh, I'm super happy to be here. This is amazing that we're doing this. Yeah, that is the uh, the lawn you don't want to lose your ball on. Oh, no, it's Mr. Gorath's lawn. Run for your life. <laughs> yeah, that would be bad. And I should mention this about Mr. Gorath, since that's what we're going to call him. He uh, was on my team and was considered by many early on to be our ringer. And I still think that he is and was and still is. Uh, but... In some ways, I've said this to a couple of people, in some ways I'm super sad we didn't win or advance at least to this part of the game or to the tournament. But part of me is kind of glad we didn't because now nobody can say that we stacked the deck or cheated our way into the finals or, you know, had any kind of weird uh, discrepancies going on. So part of me is kind of glad that now I just get to commentary and, and have some fun with it. Yeah, but where's the fun of that? I mean, I was hoping to see sitting here today doing exactly that, pulling a Justin Robert Young and saying that it was all a ruse, it was all a plan from the very beginning that you just set this up so that you could win your own tournament. Mm, well, I mean, that's my, I, I understand. See, there would have been a lot of uh, opportunities for that, and Justin, as, as the great example of this in 2015, I think, we all could have learned a little something from his tirade and, uh, and decided that, that we were all going to complain about our loss, but in a way, it's kind of nice. I don't. It's, it's one more thing I, ha I don't have to deal with. And I'm telling you, the internet and gamers, they run with stuff like this. Before you know it, there's some conspiracy. Scott is all about chemtrails and fake moon landings. I don't want <laughs> part of any of that. I just want to watch winners win. I'm happy to have played. I'm happy that we did as well as we did, as far as we did. And now we can enjoy it. It's fine. Uh well, in the future, maybe consider it because it's the best way to get yourself to the top of the Reddit of whatever esport you are in. Mm. But, uh, Gorath, since we've got you here, why don't you explain the rules of this tournament and how it has gone so far? All right. So the, the initial, um, what we talked about for this tournament is this needs to be a tournament for the rest of us. So there's a lot of tournaments where there's drafting and you have to own all these heroes and you have to know what the meta picks are or you're, you're messing your team up. We wanted to make it really easy. So the rules of the tournament are thus. You just pick whatever you want and play it. So we don't do drafting. We don't do bans. We, you literally go into the open pick mode, pick what you want, and just run with it. We have a wide range of ability and skills in terms of players. And um, so we wanted to make sure it was as inclusive as possible. So it's open to everyone. We had a group stage where, with four divisions. Everyone played one game against one of the other seven teams in their division. The top four from each division moved on to the playoffs. The playoffs were a bunch of best of three matches, which uh, I know Kyle spent some time streaming the semifinals. And um, now we're down to the final two, which is right now it's a best of five. It's no draft again. 
Uh, there'll be a coin toss at the first match. So the first team to win that coin toss will pick the map. After that, the losing team picks the subsequent map. No duplicates allowed. So we're going to get a big variety of maps today. And awesome. um, yeah, that's sort of the deal uh, with the tournament. I think of the broad strokes. I did write like five, uh, something like a novel of five pages of rules, but Can I'm I not going to go over all of them. Let me just say this is why <laughs> I think Gorath was so great for this tournament. He's very detail oriented. He thought of all of this stuff. Um, real quick, I'm, I'm very curious about this. We talked about it a little bit pre-show. Uh, Garrett was aghast at this idea. But explain the logic as to why we chose. And it was a decision. It wasn't just a, oh, let's just move forward and we forgot about it. We chose to not do draft mode for this. And there could be duplicates, you know, two teams to come together and both could have, uh, you know, a Sylvanas, for example. Why did we do that rather than go draft this round? You have to own 10 heroes to play draft. And you also have to be level 30. And Scott only owns like two heroes. So whatever. <laughs> <laughs> That is not the truth. I'm, I'm, joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm um, joking. But Scott. I think a, a lot of people in the tournament don't own 10 heroes. And Scott probably owns a lot of heroes by now. Too many. Um, but uh, we want. We didn't want to close the door for people who only had like two heroes. And we have people that are like player level 10 to 20 in the tournament. And we didn't want to say no to those folks. Um, so there's a place if you want to try hard. Uh, Blizzard's taking care of organizing that or ESL or you know, the pro gaming league. So we wanted it to be inclusive. So that's why we chose the open draft. That yeah. is awesome. I mean, this, yeah. this is like the heroes equivalent of, of the Super Smash Brothers tournaments I want to see. Like, I want the stupid stages and all items turned on. And yeah, yeah, let's yeah. just have fun. Yeah, there's the, the fun factor for, for us as a, as a kind of an organizing team and for, for Gorath as kind of executioner of all of our ideas. Uh, I don't Mr. mean he them. I, I meant he executed them. <laughs> uh, he, <clears throat> the, the, the idea from day one was, this is a way for the community to come together in a way that is fun, that is open, that isn't judgmental. If you're bad but you still want to participate, that's totally fine. If you're good and you want to participate, great. The only thing we really discouraged was any pro players from trying to rig the thing <laughs> by being way too good. And what we didn't count on was that we have some players on our, on our rosters with names that don't sound like they're going to be any good. Oh, I don't know. Names like spastic noobs and... Uh, what's the, what's the, who the guys today with jobs? Adults Those with guys, jobs. Adults, adults with, with jobs. jobs, man. Adults with jobs, bullcrap. Are your jobs playing uh, heroes all day? Because you guys are good. You're good. <laughs> so my and point where's, is, you know, where's all the spasms when you're playing spastic noobs? You yeah, guys are like <laughs> just the noob part doesn't exist. Those guys were really good <laughs> and a real challenge, and they're the ones that handed us our defeat. So, yeah, I mean, you know, we want we knew we'd get kind of a broad range of players. And what I'm happy to report is, what I'm hearing from people is, even those people who lost every preliminary game when we were in the group stages, even they came back and said, I had so much freaking fun with this. That, to me, is, is big success. Certainly, we learned some things. When we do this again, we got some ideas. And some of that may include draft mode instead. And, you know, we have other ideas. But despite all of those learning experiences or a problem here, a problem there with scheduling or whatever it may be, the, the main goal was achieved. Everybody had a good time. I hope that continues today. I'm very excited about this. It's going to be a good time. I mean, Kyle and I casted a game just last week that was all pro all the time. So I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, watching two teams that got exactly the composition that they wanted. Well, and this is yeah. going to be huge, dude, because I watched both these teams come through their qualifiers. I casted both of them multiple times. Adults with jobs. Amazingly solid play. Spastic noobs. I'm so curious if they're going to be bringing their butcher Uther combo or if they changed it up. Both teams have a Kalefoss at the moment, or did? We'll see if the actual patch affected any of that. It's going to be wacky today. Be a good time for sure. Now the players here, are, I guess we're still a little bit under time. Uh, uh, everyone's yeah. probably getting set up, but we can go ahead and run through the teams. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Mr. Gorath, would you like to tell us about these players that have, uh, well, well, I guess, eliminated both you and Scott from this tournament? <laughs> um, well, we didn't face adults with jobs, but Spastic Noobs did hand us our butts in the only game that we lost in the group stage. So let's start with Spastic Noobs, and what we want to do is humanize them a little bit for viewers by giving you a bit of information about them. So their team captain for Spastic Noobs is a gentleman called Speakska, or Speakka, sometimes referred to as Speaks. His favorite uh, champion is Johanna, 
And um, he loves uh, sushi, excuse me, and I think civilization, the video game, I assume, and not just the generic idea of civilization. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I would, but, that'd be a really fun uh, f- point in fact, though, if he's just, man, I love the concept of civilization. It really is my, uh, it's yeah, my hobby. I'm really into all, shelter. Yeah, it takes all <laughs> kinds to make the world go around, and I don't want to be disparaging, so... Uh, Mr. Speaks, if you're into civilizations, cool. But the game is also really awesome. I've sunk a lot of hours into it. By the I way, I, was, 20, I own 21 characters. I just want to make that clear how many characters I own. I own 21. <laughs> <laughs> Gorath calling Scott out. Sheesh. Anyway. Just, a, just friendly ribbing, Scott. I know. Um, so next up we have Brain Pasta. And uh, he likes to play the Butcher, which the name kind of goes with the character, if you ask me. And his favorite game is Chrono Trigger. Uh, that's a good one. You've all played that, right, everyone? Nope. Really? Sure I have, yeah. Oh, yeah. Can I? Can, is, is that okay to admit that I've never played Chrono Trigger? It's nope. kind of like it's saying okay. you've never played Final Fantasy VII, but Kyle, oh, hang okay. on him. He's out of here. That's it. Okay, but, cool. Well, I'm with Garrett forever. <laughs> no, it's a good, it's an incredible game, but I don't know that if I I've always wondered if you went back that to that today if it would hold up at all. Maybe. All right. Next on the list, we got Tinfoil, and he plays Kalthos on the team, and he's a former Rubik and Jakiro player. I don't know who those are. Um, I assume Dota 2? Those are all for me. Those notes are for me. Yes, Tinfoil, good man. (laughs) Okay. Yes, that is Dota 2. All right. And he's a freshman English teacher and former EMT. So, uh, you know, he's doing good in society. uh, Why isn't he playing the support if he's a former EMT? Uh, maybe he wants to take out all those aggressions on, on, on his patients and students when he plays heroes. He's sick of fixing injuries. He wants to cause them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Mental scarring <laughs> in freshman English 101. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Next up is Caldewin, and he plays Uther. And you want, guys want to take a shot at what he does for a living? It's pretty cool. Well, I have the notes open, so it's kind of cheap. Oh, all right. He's a police detective. Oh. And, uh, you know, I, I just picturing a police detective voiced by Uther. Um, Hello, I'd like to solve this crime. <laughs> Have you been to the store like that? Have you been to the police store? She was Time. well met when she came into my office that day. <laughs> Time is a flat circle. Yeah. All right. And last up for spastic noobs is Zereal, pronounced like cereal. So not Zireal or Zeril. He likes to play <laughs> Tassadar. And uh, he loves pancakes. I like pancakes, guys. Is that, <laughs> a, what you can just, is that really an important distinction, though? Everyone likes pancakes. Everyone likes pancakes, but some uh, like... I more. pick French toast over pancakes. Mm, and they're usually mm. stacked up against each other for a choice. So. Where's, your, what, where's your waffle in that thing, though, Bo? Ugh, or, waffle. Or, Waffles or, are only good if it's got a mountain of whipped cream and chocolate chips on it. Oh, uh, you're, you're all wrong. We can't be friends anymore. We can't be friends. Yeah, I guess Garrett and I are better friends now because uh, I'm all about yeah, the walls. Team Kyle Gorath over here. It's got to be like elephant toast. ear levels. <laughs> 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 Sorry, French I, listeners. Sorry. Awesome, awesome. All right, well, so Spastic Noobs went seven and zero in the group stage, so they were undefeated in the group stage. Um, their own our only loss was to Spastic Noobs, and they two owed all their opponents leading up to the finals. They are the team to beat. They're the team that does the dreaded Uther-Butcher combo, roaming from lane to lane, giving everyone in the tournament nightmares and, and gas. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> That's spastic news. Well, tell us about the other team they will be facing, Adults with Jobs. All right. So the other team is Adults with Jobs. Uh, presumably, they're adults, and they have jobs. And the team captain is Retrofunk. Um, he's a software engineer and indie game developer from Albuquerque, New Mexico. And I'm sorry to do this because you probably get it all the time when you tell people from Yelp, Albuquerque, but do you sell meth? Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's funny. I get that all the time being from Florida. Yeah. <laughs> My, the only thing I really know about Albuquerque or everything I know about it, I learned it from Breaking Bad. As a Canadian, I have really no knowledge of New Mexico whatsoever. Did you guys um, get uh, Bugs Bunny cartoons in your kids? Because he was always talking about going to Albuquerque. Oh, it was one that? of the few things we actually had to put us on the map i grew up in albuquerque yeah that was it you had to bugs bunny did all your pr back then man. that and there was that weird owl song albuquerque and that was a huge hit oh yeah that was that's true <laughs> but not until breaking bad had you truly broken into the mainstream yeah breaking and bad he, did a lot for albuquerque yeah. um so <laughs> he <laughs> 
So Metro Funk has a fiance, and she plays on the team too, and that's Nats. And um, Nats is a really good Nazebo player, and she's in, so she's engaged to Retro Funk, and she's in her final year of law school. So a real brain trust here in the leadership position on uh, Adults with Jobs. Mm -hmm. Then we got Randy on the team, who I think of the Trailer Park Boys, Randy, and I'm sorry to do that to you, Randy, but oh, I love that um, guy, the big gut and the hamburgers and all that. And he loves cheeseburgers, yeah. uh, but he plays on an entirely free-to-play account. So oh, wow. um, he hasn't bought a single thing in Heroes of the Storm. And uh, so he just wants us to know that you can win a tournament, too, and not pay a dime to Blizzard. Has he, has he, he's bought characters with gold, though, right? I'm sure. Oh, probably. That's, yeah. Well, yeah, he'd have sure. to, I wait, guess. Wait. <laughs> yeah. I, guess he'd, I guess he'd have to to be in the he tournament. He stole them. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> and next up, we have Brad Archer, uh, sometimes known as Sharku, maybe Mr. Sharku. And he teaches theater at a university. Uh, so look at the look at the acting chops on Archer here. Um, again, to keep it with TV references, I think of Archer the TV show. So I, everything you do, I just do it in Archer's voice, H. Nice. John Benjamin's voice. Uh, and then we have Cheesy Chips, who is a vegetarian bodybuilder. And so the Adults with Jobs team, uh, they went 7-0 and through the group stage, and they 2 0 all of their opponents, including the semifinals. They beat Coldplays, who were also undefeated in the entire tournament, and that was quite a series to watch. They fought back from the brink of destruction to actually win, because Coldplays seemed like they were the favorite. And um, I think, you know, they have a scrappy team-fighting team, and it's going to be really interesting to see these two teams go head-to-head, because -head, I'm not sure who's going to come out on top. Mm. And a lot of the, the scuttlebutt is that um, adults with jobs is the place to put your money. Not that we're ga uh, advocating gambling here, but you know what I mean. Like, they are <laughs> supposed to be the favorites in this, but I'm not so sure. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit torn on that. I, that. I think maybe that's what I'm most excited about is neither of these two teams is striking me as completely dominating the other. I think these are going to be tight matches and very close. Right. If we're going uh, from their, you know, climb here... Adults with Jobs played super solidly, always as a group of five. Johan in front, healers in the back. Everything was just almost a formation. I'm sure they have, you know, code words they call out. But can Spastic News kind of squeeze in there with this crazy butcher play and just dismantle what they hope to put together? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Garrett. Sorry. Oh, I was just saying, I was about to say, it looks like the players are just about ready, but that is not the case, actually. <laughs> <laughs> near miss everybody near miss i'm glad i stopped the conversation for that information yeah that's um, good uh no i just i being jokey uh no i was gonna say that spastic noobs time and again i feel like i know i have said oh they're doing this cheesy tactic one of these days someone's gonna get their goat you know they're gonna figure out their their tricks and beat them and it hasn't happened yet. And so I'm eager to find out if adults with jobs will do it. Because i got to say that the players who play Uther and, and the Butcher, which is uh, Brain Pasta and Caldewin, play together really well. Like it's like, two, it's like Siamese twins playing on computers side by side. And they're just, and they're also Siamese twins that are also linked telepathically. Uh, <laughs> <they've>, <laughs> they, they play together really well. Um, it's pretty incredible to see. Yeah, it sounds like the opposite of how Kyle and I play heroes. <laughs> I like Not watching two play like normal lot, people. <laughs> there's, always, there's always a lot of cussing happening, yeah. swearing. Only me. on my end. Yeah. Kyle is a gentleman and a scholar, no matter what is happening in the game. No, no, he's always very sweet natured. But I, I hear you, and I think that someone may die before this game is over. <laughs> <laughs> It'll probably be me from a brain aneurysm. There you go. Yeah, some people work like a wolf pack. We're more like two cats who both want the same sleeping position, and the other one is not moving. <laughs> wow. That's one of the most insulting descriptions of my gameplay I have ever received from anyone. Thank you for that, Kyle. You're welcome. A lot of great <laughs> similes on today's uh, broadcast. Uh, so uh, what's on the line here? So the, these guys win. Of course, whoever wins gets mad cred. Yeah. But uh, so, you want to yeah. know what else they get? Let me tell you what they get. Here you go. Hold on. Damn it. I got a frog it. pants site. There it is. The hero pants. So if you go to frogpants.com slash hero pants, uh, everything's detailed there. So here's what people are going to get. The winning team will get a $10 battle net card, gift card. That means each person on the team. And when I say gift card, they'll just, we'll get them 10 bucks somehow. Cause I don't think you can do the actual cards. Can you, or can you, can you, you can buy a battle uh, net, right? 
Yeah, but the battle net cards, I think, only come in $20 increments. <laughs> I think, well, yeah, but we were going to do something digital. Anyway, one way or the other, they'll get 10 bucks toward their account, which means they can buy a hero with that. That's our, that's our thinking there. So everybody, basically, the, the, the contest idea there was, hey, everyone gets a hero, basically. Uh, yeah. You get a, ins everybody on each team will get an instance mug uh, from the instance podcast at the instance.net. Uh, the mugs are there on the store if you want to see what they look like. It's a sweet, nice logo, nice mug. I have three I use here at home. I love them. So they'll each get a free mug. Those are like 14 bucks normally. Uh, they get a free choice of a 12 by 18 print from the Frog, Frog Pants store. Any art they want, anything they want at all that is 12 by 18, they get absolutely free and signed. And there may be some extras in there. We've got a bunch of nerdtacular stuff we may throw in. There's a, a few other little knickknacks. But everybody on the winning team, all five of them, get all of that, plus all the street cred they can eat. Nice. Yeah. Pretty good prize package right there. Street cred is, is, is a, very, uh, it's a very important currency in the land of frog pants. I mean, that's uh, all we got from the frog pants all-stars, and I'm very happy about it. It's the new, uh, it's the new drug coming out of uh, Florida. It's, a, it's called street cred. And, um, <laughs> why, if, why all this Florida? Why, we've got people here from Albuquerque, Mexico, and everyone's laying on Florida. Come on. I don't know. It's just well, something about the way you guys make weird things happen. I don't know. It's magic. <laughs> right. I think it's that you know, people in Albuquerque, New Mexico do drugs and wander through the desert. People in Florida do drugs and assault McDonald's. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That Jeez. sounds about right. It's fine. It's America's wang. We want, we need you. It's fine. You're fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> good. It's good, Scott, that you're celebrating your differences rather than letting it be divisive. Very Canadian, very Canadian thing to do. Yep. <laughs> Canadian? <laughs> Scott's a Utah. No, he means that Canada is very... Um, they're I'm, always sorry and, you know, yeah, they're the nice I, guys. I live in Canada. I'm actually from the capital of Ashley Madison, Ottawa, mm -hmm. where everyone has an account on Ashley Madison. I might even have an account and I don't even know it. Um, yeah, well, they don't verify email addresses. So if you uh, if they reveal that <laughs> uh, Mr. Gorath is on Ma Ashley Madison, you'll know why. Yeah, I have like six <laughs> accounts. So I feel like my odds are good. I have six email accounts. You just so. need to start your own dating website called Gorath's Front Lawn. <laughs> Mr. Gorath's dating service. <laughs> <laughs> that's that the best that's idea like I think wonderful. I've ever heard. Um, my so friend good. and I are looking for some great ideas for a startup, so uh, thanks, Kyle. You'll find love or else. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, but I, I've been, you know, teaching Scott the Canadian way. You know, when we play heroes and he wants to get mad, I say, it's all good. It's okay to lose. We'll win the next one. Yeah, he's super, yeah. super chill about losses and, and stuff the like that. It's a fifty percent chance to win. You can't yeah. win all of them. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I, and there's not there are nights where you're just you know well Garrett you know you just you want to you want to rip somebody's head off after a after a, a ridiculous loss or something. But Gorath's always there to calm everybody down. Yep. My uh, my peripherals are always here to, to calm me down by uh, breaking. No, oh, there you go. Yeah. Badly. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. My <laughs> mouse is the one who knocks against my wall. <laughs> well, it looks like both our teams are ready. Yeah. Right. Great. So, Gorath, we will see you on the other side. Yep. I'll be watching eagerly. Good luck to all the contestants, and you guys have fun casting the match. Thanks, man. All right. Ta ta. Bye. A good time. I am so excited to get into this game, guys. Me too. Sweet. Well, let's ready up. They're getting ready. Who, yeah, are they getting ready? Are they so? Oh, okay. Here you go. I can see it now. Yeah. I see players doing things. It's funny because I'm in an observer slot, so the the center hero select that would be me if I was actually in the game is empty, so I can't see if that player who they are, what player it is, or if they're locked in or not. I think that's Archer, and he's most likely on Johanna. Looks like we're actually going to have the exact groups that they went through their phases with, so no real changes up based on the patch. Yeah. So looking at, uh, this is Spastic Noobs, it looks like we're having Speakska on Johanna, Brain Pasta on his Butcher, uh, Kaldon on Uther, Zeriel on, uh, that's Tassadar, I always get the Protoss mixed up because they all look alike, oh. and uh, yeah, look, I went there, and Tinfoil on Kael'thas. Mm. Now as for Team Adults with Jobs, 
Uh, looks like Randy's going to be on Vala, Retrofunk on Uther, Nats on Azebo, and Cheese Chips isn't locked in, but is hovering over his master skin, Jaina. And there he just locked in. So locked we're seeing Jaina. Yeah. So uh, I, this what this says to me is that they are, because they're going with you know same or similar uh, uh, makeup or comp, team comp here, it says to me that they're not so worried about changes to individual character stats they are more reliant or want to continue to be more reliant on the fact that they are good composition that have good combos and stuff like that they're not they're not looking for individual stuff here they're looking for what are we already doing well as a team and despite a few changes here and there longer cooldown for him shorter cooldown for that guy greater damage more mana we still have our core strategies and we're going to count on those things Exactly, and this Butcher Uther thing is so ridiculously well rehearsed for Spastic Noobs, though I haven't gotten to see him do it on Cursed Hollow. In fact, Cursed Hollow, one of the lesser played maps during this tournament. For some reason, maybe you can inform me, Scott, Spider Queen seems mm. like it was picked every single matchup in the Frog Pants showdowns here. It did feel like that. We would never pick it um, when we got to pick, when we would roll, and we weren't very lucky with that, but everybody we played seemed to want to always pick it, and I even remember Scott Kurt's team would pick it, and I and I still, to this moment, not entirely sure why they wanted that map, um, other than it is quick for team fights. It's a way to sort of move around the map in a, in a way that you couldn't do on other maps, and perhaps that was their thinking, is that, you know, we get some quick kills early, let's get some XP out of that. Um, it did seem to be the 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 thing du jour, but it's ironic because in, in you know regular quick matches or even league play, players complain about Spider Queen. They they don't. It's not everyone's favorite, so I, I don't know why that was the strategy at the time. I love me some Spider Queen. Now on the left side we have this is uh, adults with jobs on the left side in the blue trunks, and on the right side we have spastic noobs. And it does look like... Now, Spastic Noobs, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Brain Pasta and Kaldon are known for their Uther Butcher roaming composition. They like to just run around in the jungle and find anyone they can kill. Exactly. And these are the lanes for them. Brain Pasta and Uther running around. And Kael'thas always taking that solo lane. One of the more dangerous of the two. Tassadar mid. Johanna up top. Johanna such an amazing solo laner at this point in the game right now. And for Adults with Jobs, they love this... Solid comp all by itself of Johanna, Uther, and Jane in the background. They can get a lot done with that. Yeah, both Johanna's taking that Knight Takes Pawn level 1 talent, which is what allows Johanna to be such a strong laning uh, hero. Seeing those two roam, and they're already doing it, yep. um, they... With it, they're top. Yeah, that combination is uh, frightening as a player, but I just want to quickly mention the lore that's happening there. Uther, the great uh, noble man of light, with a big serial killer bastard hole from the Diablo games, uh, hanging out together and doing real work together. I think is is if just just purely from an outside of this game lore perspective, there is some weird crap going on right there. <laughs> well, Nats is doing a great job, kind of hugging the towers here. Uh, she knows that if she goes too far out, they're may look. They're so patient. They're just waiting, and there's nowhere else for them to really be. Uh, looks like Uther. And Jaina for Adults with Jobs is actually kind of looking around for him. In fact, a double gank possibly going down in the top lane. Yeah, we're already seeing Zombie Wall go up or whatever Scott wants to, whatever terminology Scott would like to use to describe that. Circle jerk. Uh, Earther, Uther going down. <laughs> or Earther, if you want to call him that. <laughs> Be a good skin gardener, Uther. Yeah. yeah, so first kill goes to Adults with Jobs. That's first blood. Uh, yeah. It's still no, early in the it's game. Never, it's never really an indicator of anything, but it still always seems like such an important momentum thing in the beginning. It just, you know, no, no matter how much you know that a single kill early on when you only got like a 10 second cooldown on death, it still seems like something significant, uh, psychologically speaking. Yeah, okay, so Brain Pasta was about to dive on Retro Funk, but he decided against it as uh, as the three three adults with jobs players in the mid decided to turn back as soon as they saw that coming for them now we're getting our first tribute spawning in the north position speaks uh, already uh trying to take it on johanna they're getting flanked or she will be flanked Oof. great yeah, unstoppable gotta, there wait. not even worth blowing the stun from retro Fun. yeah it's looking like spastic noobs is deciding that it's better to stay in lane and get try and get an xp lead rather than take the first uh the first tribute so first tribute tribu goes to adults with jobs pretty valid strategy as well i'm seeing that a lot um and even just quick play uh people letting that first one go and yeah. uh, it's always a trick knowing which team is going to let it go because sometimes it'll just sit there and no one's getting it 
uh, it, especially when you're talking about randoms. But uh, in this case, that looked like a concerted effort by those guys. Yeah, now Spastic Noobs, despite being down a kill, are, are slightly ahead in the XP race, but, but not by a whole lot. I would, I would say it was, it was better for adults with jobs to get that, uh, to get that tribute because they're not that far behind in XP. Uh, what's actually going to come down to is who gets level 7 before the next tribute, and right now Spastic Noobs is set for that Brain Pasta. Butcher, whenever he's standing still, he does so much damage, they may actually be able to burn through this fort if uh, Archer can't get help. Yeah, that bottom lane is... Uh... Wow, I, I don't think, looking at, uh, no, they, adults of jobs have three top and are just now starting to move to assist, but this uh, that bottom fort is going to go down. Yeah, close to it. Yeah, it looks like they'll have to get it here later, but that yeah, that's some, that's pretty quick damage. Um, they are in a better position, though, up top, uh, adults of jobs, to maybe get that uh, tribute if they're trying to get it in the second round. Exactly, and if, and if they're in a Zebo, if Nat stays top, uh, uh, doesn't matter, they're already seven, so this is going to be an even fight. But it also jobs is now moving back into middle lane and it oh, looks this like this is going to get dangerous but you're charging in on randy randy taking a lot of damage and can he okay he flips out uther gets the heal and actually tassadar takes the tribute in the background and retro funk even staying away from everyone while he has the living bomb on him uh spastic noobs got the tribute so they are tied up and uh looks like it's just going to be a gentleman's game for a little bit Mm -hmm. <laughs> gentlemen with roaming murderers in the background. <laughs> <laughs> as much of a gentleman as the butcher can be. Sure, I still I still maintain that Tassadar. Speaking of Tassadar, is a great pick for team comp, regardless of kind of what you're doing. I mean, not regardless, but you can you can have real interesting moments in a game with Tassadar. People don't see him as a high win rate ratio character, but he's able to do things that others can't. He can harass in a way that others can't. I still probably have the most fun watching him in competitive play, so I'm anxious to see what we see from Tassadar in this game. Yeah, Caldon Cal uh, and his buddy Brain Pasta and Butcher just took the Knights in the uh, mid position for, for their side of the battleground as the uh, as the tribute spawns. So Adults with Jobs in a little bit better of a position. They're there earlier, but everyone has gotten here in time. It looks like we're going to see our first real team fight. It's a great position for Adults with Jobs. Archer doing such a great job kind of zoning out the front. Great zombie wall there to cause some confusion and cheese chips. Oh, wow. Missing. Oh, gets it just in time. Yeah. Caldon landed, but it was too late. Barely. But the fight is not over. Speaks of doing doing a good job tanking, but getting really low really fast. Oh, on goes Can that. they get the kill? Oh, Butcher. Brain pasta, brain pasta going down. They got the stun on Uther as well. That's going to be a double kill for Adults with Jobs. Yeah. There goes your there goes your lane crew. <laughs> those two. Oh, those two. I freaking hate those two. Adults with jobs now pulling ahead in the XP lead as well, which is really important because we are moving very close to the important level ten. Yeah. And that's I, when, uh, that's when. Uh, well, no, it's not. It's actually what is it? Sixteen until uh, Kelthus seems like he's even worth playing ever. That's, that's correct. Just about him. Yeah, he's kind I of can, terrible until then, and then he's amazing from then. Yeah. On. Well, that right. was correct, but now with the change, he's actually pretty darn good all game long, but actually quite a bit of damage going out on uh, him. Tinfoil, uh -oh. gonna Tin fall. Go down. <laughs> yep, that's it. Uh, and now, Adults with Jobs hit level 10. Uther taking Divine Shield, Vala taking Strafe, Jaina taking Water Elemental, Johanna taking Blessed Shield, and Nazebo taking Ravenous Spirit. Nothing, we do not see that very often nowadays from Nazebo. No, just got buffed though, so I guess they've been practicing all week, and I'm curious to see what Nats can pull off with it. Retrofunk tanking Abs in the front, Archer getting in position, a lockdown, and there's the Ravaging Spirit, a little out of position, Butcher oh. charges in the yeah. back. Nats is very exposed right now with that Ravenous Spirit. He's going to end it, but it's too late. I think they're going to get the kill off on him. Oh, maybe not. Oh, nope. There he goes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, good lord. Speaks of being very brave as Johanna. She is, or he is very low, but, but he survived, and it's working out for them. Three kills now for Spastic Noobs, and all five of their teammates are alive. They uh, really got them low, though. Couple, One more little, um, you know, one nice little blizzard difference and they would have had way more kills there that was pretty impressive even though they didn't win that fight yeah that was that uh, spastic noobs really knew what they were doing there they they knew when to stay and fight and when to back out yeah looks like we've got brain pasta and caldon merkin again yeah we've some got, lane uh, change ups yeah we got uther and jaina for adults with jobs also merking 
And this next tribute's gonna be a really big deal because both teams are sitting at two. The positioning is a little on the favor of adults with jobs because they have the sight tower already up and they are in position actually. And Jaina, wow, bit of an exposed position, but oh, retro Oh, the gank off on Kael'thas, maybe not. Oh, 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 wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, dude. Fantastic divine shield by Kaldon. And two more kills off an adults with jobs. Spastic noobs just, once again, looking like they're it's not going well for them, and they just turn it in their favor. Oh, despite that beautiful blizzard and the stun to keep Kael'thas in it, he gets out. This whole game, or this whole series, Spastic noobs is Uther has been so willing to use Divine Shield on any problem that comes up and really saves the squishies early on. Oh, and it absolutely paid off for them. Brain Pasta going in on Retro Funk, but it looks like Retro Funk has plenty of mana and can't see his cooldowns, but that he, I think he should be able to keep himself alive just fine. That puts Curse on there, so off they go. Who's Red again? Now I've lost my place. Oh, Red's... Uh, That's noobs. That's noobs, yeah. So they're, they've got Curse. Um... It's interesting the, uh, the the way I see Nazebo play these days. I feel like I'm watching. It's like ta it's a, it's like Tassadar getting his uh, his heroic wall the entire game. Um, if if there's a smart Nazebo player and throwing up circle jerk whenever he gets a chance, I, game changer sometimes that thing. And it's not even surrounding somebody. It's just keeping people out, zoning them out, keeping them where they need to be. This is I cannot believe Spastic Moves is getting away with this boss steal from it adult. Was Jobs. It was that Phoenix that zoned them out. Adults with jobs could not walk through that damage with them one level up, and they're going to take the boss. Luckily, there's no fourth there to stop them. And now, Adults with jobs is going to have to defend this boss, so really, there's nothing stopping Spastic Noobs from going and taking their own boss, but it looks like they're going to opt for taking down this middle fort. Yeah, and they're going to get it. Brain Pass is already wailing on it. It's going to fall. Meanwhile, the boss is pushing bottom, and this is when Spastic Noobs should go take that boss. It looks like they're going to. And Adults with jobs knows this. Uh, they they pulled the same exact trick on their enemies in the round of four, so they know exactly what's bad. It's so disheartening. Yeah, yeah this is awesome. They've got somebody laning. That's exactly what they should be doing right now. It's a very close kill game, but all of the forts are still up for Spastic Noobs, while Adults with Jobs has lost two of them, and they're behind by an entire level's worth of XP. Now with a Tassadar on your team, you're going to have some longer lasting defenses since that shield can be cast on them. Uh, looking at some of the other towns, we do see Kael'thas going the Chain Living Bomb build. Two Shrink Rays for Spastic Noobs, which is going to be huge against the Vala and the Jaina. Uh, that's that's yeah. quite the wall of CC to walk through, but they got to deal with another boss. They still they also have one Shrink Ray over on the side of, uh, of Adults with Jobs. Retro Funk going and opting for Shrink Ray as well. I love that talent. So much utility. Uh, the noobs are really good at Merc control. Um, when we played them, that's really what killed us in our two games against them. Uh, just absolute domination of Merc camps on the map. And they always seem to have the timing, the rhythm down to where that momentum was in their favor. And I'm, they're doing very similar things here. Important thing to note, Adults with Jobs does not have the Divine Shield now. They, uh, they had to use it very early to save their Jaina in this push. So Randy, who's very exceptionally low at the moment, is probably going to have to back out because if he gets targeted, Uther cannot save her. For down, boss keeps walking. This is a very strong push by Spastic Noobs. So that is all of the front forts for Adults with Jobs. They are on the back foot now. Lucky for Adults with Jobs, though, Spastic Noobs isn't anywhere close to 16. They're not going to surprise them in this engagement with that talent, which can be huge. So there's still time for them to come back. Absolutely. However, the tribute did just spawn in a very favorable position for Spastic Noobs. <laughs> yeah. So it doesn't look like adults with jobs are going to get the curse that I'm sure they desperately want right now. Yeah, they're they've get you can see they were not even making. The and look at the confidence. If you just look at the mini map with both Uther and uh, and the butcher not even going to help with the with yeah. the tribute, they know it's theirs. So they're gonna stay mid, see if uh, see if adults with jobs maybe gives them a kill. I which think of that's course a, they're not. That's a big advantage for them. They seem to have a lot of intuition um, about what's happening in the dark, and they're not afraid to, to let that tuition make their decisions for them, and I think that's in their favor. All right, now Tinfoil is alone at the bottom, but it doesn't look like Adults with Jobs is aware of this fact because they are still mid, pushing that lane back out, and it looks like they're going to go take the fight to top, uh, probably because they saw Kael'thas come up on the minimap and know that they can have a 5v4 fight yeah, this is gonna get. Noobs does not move. Oh, oh look at this dangerous. gank. Look at this setup. Well, 
Watch Brain Pasta just get focused down, but the Divine Shield perfectly timed by Kaldon. I can't believe what I am seeing. Wow. Yeah, Nat's trying to throw out that Ravaging Spirit, not doing enough damage through all the shields two supports worth of healing, and, and Archer's going to have to limp his way out. Tinfoil shows up just in time, too. It might look like Archer, he might not live through this. Uh, he's Johanna. I wouldn't put him out just yet, but they do mount up to chase him. Unstoppable shield goes down. Kael'thas has a stun. He hits it, and that'll be a dead Archer. Down goes Archer. Unfortunately, that means Randy is alone as Vala. I'm not really sure what Randy should do right now. I, If I was Randy, I would just stay in my base and wait for people to res. Yeah. Just about two, almost three levels down. Yeah, uh, Spastic Team is definitely starting to uh, really capitalize on their lead. Yeah, they've got the moment. Well, and they're doing a great snowball build for Butcher. He's going with the increased uh, fresh meat, which when he... There he is. He selected Blood Frenzy. Okay, so that's 35% increased uh, damage and attack speed for him. So if they can't kill Brain Pasta and put him back at zero, he's just going to snowball out of control. Yeah, Absolutely. and don't, I mean, the, note that they are grouped this entire time. They are not spread out. Nobody's spread out. I mean, both teams can't be at this point, but it's just so precision. Uh, and and just watch Caldon's Uther play. He is on the money supporting everyone. It, it, we, we just saw Tinfoil step into a blizzard while trying to push the wall there, and Caldon didn't miss a beat. He healed Kalthos right back up. Well, it looks like we might have some merc time for spastic noobs while Adults with Jobs defends their base, but uh, they decide better of it. I'm going to go clear out mid lane. I just realized, by the way, spastic noobs even went as far as to color code their team. They are all red and all on uh, Hearthstone cards, except for Brain Posture, who is on a red flying carpet that might as well be a Hearthstone card. Yeah. Wow. Color coordination. Yeah. Oh. Your team's serious. You sure they don't all live in a warehouse together and eat together and train together and all that? <laughs> I don't know. Adults with Jobs is all sporting the black horse. Yeah. It's adults with jo adults with jobs is looking like they want to take their boss instead of getting this tribute, which means that spastic noobs will get two tributes in a row. Yeah. And judging by the way they're moving, they're thinking of taking their own boss on the back of this. Absolutely. I don't see why they won't. Adults with jobs is still down a talent on them, not to mention now three levels. And they're down they still haven't hit they haven't had a curse. No, uh, not not a single one yet. Yeah, so this is... Now, they only need one more tribute, so they could... If, if they win an engagement and the tribute pops, they could catch up in this game very easily, but they are about to have to defend a, uh, a boss while cursed. Meanwhile, though, it is going to be a boss pushing bottom for adults with jobs, so they can get that forward XP. This late in the game, that could jump them up, close that gap a bit. Uh, looks like they might be thinking of going for a gank, but there's a boss walking around there. Get out of there, guys. Yeah. They literally are two <laughs> levels behind at this point. Um, you know, one smart, one really smart team fight could send noobs to the to the uh, to the nexus while they do some real damage. So I don't. I hope anybody watching this doesn't think that this by any means means a spell sort of you know doom for these guys. There's a real chance chance here for them still. This is going to be an interesting fight because adults with jobs still have not secured their level 17 talents. So spastic noobs do have the uh, do have the leg up. Yeah, but everyone's also, got alts. That is true. Tinfoil hat, or I mean, tinfoil hat, just tinfoil. <laughs> <laughs> Already using his, uh, his his heroic ability there, throwing down the phoenix. Uh, Archer snagging brain pasta a little far out. Uther, of course, right on top of him. There's the ravaging spirit. But you're going to charge on the gnats. That, of course, interrupts her ult. Invulnerability gets her out. Would have been awful to be stuck in those roots. And yep. hey, that's a dead butcher. Yep. That is. Butcher down. Down goes Kaldon as well. It's nothing we haven't seen a lot of in this game. But he is Uther, which means he gets to just keep throwing heals. They not are, however, not level 20, so yeah. Uther is going to have to wait to res. Tinfoil a little exposed here in the middle lane, but it doesn't look like Adults with Jobs is in position to deal with him. They are not. They are all top. It looks like they are now going to head south. Well, maybe not. They want to get sight back on their tower, and they do not want to split up. I don't blame them. There. This is the first time all game they have been up uh, in kills. And uh, not overall, obviously, but two dead for Spastic Noobs, one dead for Adults with Jobs. And I don't think Adults with Jobs want to give Spastic Noobs a, an easy kill. 
It's looking like Adults with Jobs are, might want to push that top fort. I mean, it is, it is like two hits away from death at this Plus point. It's just sticking out like a sore thumb. Just, Absolutely. Just for, my own, just for my own map, you know, irritation. I just want that to go away at this stage in the game because that should not be standing at this moment. Yeah. Spec Spastic Noobs hitting 20. So Johanna went and got a Storm Shield. So if they weren't already insanely high in survivability, Storm Shield just sealed it for them. And also, Tassadar took Storm Shield. They have two Storm Shields, plus a Divine Shield, plus regular Tassadar Shields. The adults of Jobs have their work cut out for them trying to get a kill off on Spastic Noobs. Yeah. Yeah, Adults of Jobs is going to have to squeeze in a 20 somewhere. And actually, they're pushing into the fort, so this could be their chance if they can get one or two kills off. But all those Storm Shields are going to be so huge when they go off. And looks like playing quite reserved at the moment, Spastic Noobs, as they push through, waiting for someone to make the first call. And this, mean, that, this means that Noobs have catapults pushing both top and bottom as the inner, inner keeps go down. Another convenient uh, spawn for a tribute for them. Just fall right back and get it. Absolutely. Yeah, they are swarming that thing, and Adults of Jobs can't do anything about it. Luckily, it's not a big tribute, but... This is the third time they might be subject to a curse without them getting one. Absolutely. Adults of Jobs just opting to take their top siege giants. All together, no. holding hands. <laughs> no one's yeah. going anywhere alone. <laughs> Have your accountability buddy with you at all times. <laughs> <laughs> all right, they're heading bottom. So that's interesting. Meanwhile, Spastic Noobs is pushing mid. They're going to make something of it. Spiska in the front, so ready to tank. But no, they're going to curve around and actually take the mercenaries and yeah. abandon the lane. They're well, very, I mean, what a... <laughs> very Merc-focused, this team. They always have been. It's To their credit, you know? I mean, it does wonders for them. It's very distracting, very annoying, very harassing, and they, they really do it well. And the Tribute spawning back on Noob's side of the map. So they're not even looking like they want to take it because it takes them away from the front line. But they're opting to go for it now. Yeah. I mean, they're controlling two very important aspects of this map. It's all mercs, all tribute. And pretty good team play. So, I, you know. Adults of Jobs have their work cut out at this stage of the game. They're only a level behind, but... Well, we do see level 20 for adults with jobs, and that's going to be a res on the Uther, of course. Uh, Nexus Frenzy range on the auto attack Vala. Ravaging Spirit actually being the one that Nazebo goes for. Blink for Jaina and the Indestructible for Johanna. So less team play, but more heavy, heavy tank. Absolutely, and that, that could end up working out really well for Archer, as he should be in front of the pack at most times. Having a big team fight going on now. Oh. Down went Uther, Archer being targeted, already popping the indestructible level 20 talent. It's just a ton of damage. There goes Uther. He's going to pop right back up, though, once he's down. Cheese Chips kind of coming around the back, a dangerous position, but they actually snagged the Butcher in the back of that. Two down for Spastic Noobs, at least for the second. Uther going to pop up on both sides soon. And Tassadar trying to make his way out. Great zombie wall. And looks like everybody else gets out. Yeah, zombie wall worked against him there. <laughs> oh, wait. Who cast it? Did Blue cast the zombie wall? Yes. All right. That, was, yeah, that, was, yeah. that didn't work the way they wanted it to. Meanwhile, Adults with Jobs base is getting a little full of catapults. Yeah. That is absolutely. I mean, right now, noobs are having to defend against this, this boss, but it, it doesn't really matter because Adults with Jobs are trapped in their base. Someone well, needs to poke that thing. They're at 42%, 40 now. I mean, they've got to they have to be there. Uh, it would be a pretty safe time, actually, for noobs to go for their boss. Uh, never mind. I retract that statement. Oh, All the Lord. mercs are dead. <laughs> Adults with Jobs smells it, and they are going to see if they can deny this. Yeah, they got to leave Nazebo behind, though, to defend the base. All those catapults. And all the damage is going off on tinfoil, but Spastic News has shown that they're more than willing to blow up. And, hey... They got got a kill on Kael'thas. Kael'thas is going down. Butcher is back, however, and he is running as fast as he can on that carpet, but it's not fast enough. Tacit are going down as well. Yeah. Well, they got their first uh, curse, so that's something. And the curse will be a big deal. That takes even the catapults down to only one hit point, so they'll actually get a chance to push out here. Meanwhile, with two dead, they need to make something happen on the back of this, and it's going to be a boss with a spastic noobs, of course, hovering hungrily in the background. 
Yeah, we're watching noobs wanting to do something, but this is three versus five. I'm not sure what they can pull off. We are now equal in level. Oh, Vala getting very low. Archer Ooh. going low as well. Archer, he still has indestructible, though, on the back of this. He does, and it hasn't popped yet. Someone oh, stand on that pad. That thing. Wow. Fighting on the sir. Oh, and we now have an all kill for adults with jobs. Wow. Wow, that's big. That's big. They need to now capitalize as best they can, given the circumstances. Well, and Archer doesn't even have time to go back. They got to make this happen now. They got eight seconds till two are up, 45 seconds till the rest are up, so they can get a lot done here. Tassadar and Kael'thas are going to be a pretty good defense, though, particularly with some people still hovering around half. Absolutely. <laughs> My UI is glitching out. I thought Uther was dead, but he's right here. Nope, that's a pretty common. <laughs> when he reses, it messes up. So another good nice zombie one. wall, though. They oh snag Tassadar. Adults with jobs rallying, looking like they they can finish this. They can finish this right here and now. They've got the time. They don't even need the boss. The boss is like, you guys. The got boss this. is going to take. <laughs> I'm going to take up this inner keep. Guys, I got this. XP for everybody. Here we go. Beautiful. Uh, that boss Chipstone. loves catapults, and he wants to see more of them. That is tinfoil. Tinfoil doing all he can, but I'm not sure it's enough. It's not. I can't believe the comeback we just saw. Wow. wow. Amazing, amazing rally by adults with jobs. Unbelievable. They even ended with a kill lead. Yeah. If, 14 to 12. If adults with jobs had lost that because the boss decided to go push mid lane solo, that would have just been tragic. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, it would have, but it did not matter. So it was it was almost like they did it on per. If, if you could control your boss, that would be the ultimate BM. It's... uh. Wow, that Nazebo just killing it. Um, I, uh, I wow. this is what I'm saying though. Like, that was not that was their game to to lose. They were gonna lose that game, and they and this is what they they do. They come back and they freak everybody out. I think that is an amazing final push by those guys, and just one good team fight. That's all you need, and they did it. Well, That's from, usually the kind of game you see from a team with Kael'thas. You get to level 16, and you see the team start to come back from the edge of death, but that entire game's Spastic Noobs looked like they had it. And it also Jobs said, we don't need a Kael'thas. We've got an Azebo doing more than 10,000 damage of your Kael'thas. Let's do this. Right. From our eye in the sky, the Nazebo didn't look like it was doing too much, but with the Storm Shields, with all the healing coming out from the Uther, Nazebo's Ravaging Spirit may have actually burn through all that healing and shields in one of the game. Yeah, that was incredible. I can't believe what we just saw. <laughs> it's insane, dude. There will never, can I just say this again? There will never be a resign button in this game, ever. It, it won't <laughs> exist. It, because you can't. Like, uh, any other team, any other, these, any other MOBA, they'd have given up a long time ago. This is the kind of game where literally something can change that last minute, and that's exactly what happened. It's just crazy. It was a great first game for the finals. Well, we'll probably have our teams taking a short, short break. But in the meantime, we can just kind of chill. Absolutely. We can do what we do best, Kyle. We can talk about heroes. There we go. <laughs> heroes is great. Now, Scott, so, you Scott switched over to Vala almost for the entirety of the tournament. I did, and it's funny. Um, I'm glad you brought this up. So... I'm pretty good with Vala. I like her. I've been able to do some things with her. Whatever. She's good. Um, and we felt like she was the best choice for the comps we were going with, which changed slightly here and there. Usually just a different tank one one game and, a, and versus another game. But I actually have, if I have any regret about my time in the tournament, it would be that I didn't go with my gut and use... Uh, use Tassadar more, or at least push that I felt like I could do more with Tassadar. For whatever reason, I've been able to use him in ways that have just created real opportunities for for team play. And uh, I don't know, I don't know why it feels feels wrong that I didn't choose him. But I don't know if you guys have ever had this though. You're just like you you just got to go with your gut. And in draft play, obviously you have less choices. But but in that particular comp, I feel like I could have maybe done more with him. I wouldn't have had as much damage and. You know, he's kind of jack of all trades, master of none. And I realize that, and, and, and in many ways, the new monk is that way too. But um, I don't know. I just felt like I could have disrupted plays, created the confusion, uh, you know, done more sort of zoning and things that I can do with him, and done some really nice last-second saves. 
uh, with his shield. So, yeah, I, I, that's the only real regret I have. That isn't to say that Vala isn't a great choice. She's in every good, strong comp, it feels like. Um, it Just for whatever reason, my, my instincts were I should have pushed that and I didn't. And uh, I, I don't know that that would have changed the outcome of the matches, or certainly our results, probably not. But I think we may have gone a little bit further in, in um, you know, creating a more dynamic game for the for the other team to have to deal with. Well, I know, you know, coming across the tournament, there were maybe three major patches along the way. I know, you know, Willie Dills, he was a really solid, high damage Anubarak for you guys. And then that got nerfed, and that really hurt your goal's team comp. Yeah, that dinged us pretty hard, and I can't remember what we ended up settling with after that. I think he went, um... No, he went Skeleton King for a little bit. But, uh, oh, Falstad. Yeah. He jumped Falstad. off Falstad right. completely randomly. I got this, guys, and just destroyed that game. That was real cool. Yeah, he's he turned out real good with Falstad, and Falstad had had some nice, uh, some nice changes in this most recent patch, especially. But he turned out to be a pretty good use for our comp. I mean, at the end of the day, that final game that we played against uh, Spastic Noobs just really came down to them dominating and us not being ready for them to dominate the way they did. So we don't really have any good excuses for where our weaknesses were or anything like that. It just they were just the better team. And they kicked our freaking butts. And I started to think in this match, they had it. Like, I am still kind of shocked that the results are what they are and that uh, Adults with Jobs walked away with this one. And I still say, if if they're, you know, they, I keep hearing that they're the favorite. And now you can kind of see why. When all the cards are down, those guys still have a way. They find a way and they make it happen. And this game is just insane. That was an incredible game. I, I'm so excited that you guys asked me to come and cast this because that was a treat. <laughs> that yeah, was an so absolute fun, treat. Right? Oh my gosh, so much fun. Well, it looks uh, like we're going on to Haunted Minds, which is actually going to be Spastic Noob's selection since they lost it. And boy, is that a intense, short, and sometimes snowbally map. Yeah. yeah. Looking, like, looking like Tinfoil is opting for Sylvanas on Haunted Minds. She's pretty strong there. Um, she'll probably not spend as much time in the mines as she will outside laning. That's been our yeah. experience. Um, my cohort, uh, John Jagger, is an incredible Sylvanas player, and that is how he'll behave on this map. It's funny they chose this map. It feels a little, not trolly, but, well, no one likes Haunted Mines. Let's just be honest about it. It's kind of like, it's, it's fine, whatever, it's a map, and it exists in the rotation, but it's nobody's favorite. Um, so they must have a real reason for picking it. They must think that they are strong there, and I'm curious to see how they do because we never this never this map never came up in the rotation ever in our entire tournament when we played. If you have a if you have a pre made team and you have a strategy that you swear by for haunted mines, uh, I would not be surprised that you would want to take it because yeah yeah uh, strong strategies definitely shine in that uh, in that battleground because if you make one wrong call down in the mines, it can lead to a team wipe. Yeah, absolutely. Now we're actually having a pretty big switch up here. Ad adults with jobs going to be taking a butcher, looks like, and going double support with a Muradin. Really? Weird. I'm again getting that bug where I can't see one of them, so. <laughs> right, right. We have a mystery middle player. Uh, just part of the UI problems, but this is going to be. Who's our missing? Who's the missing player? Is that, that's probably Butcher again. Yeah, we could have a double Butcher again. That'd be interesting. And then they're just trading out the Kael'thas for Sylvanas. I think that's a smart choice here on Haunted Mines because of the push potential. Yeah. Uh, it looks like I'm we're all set. So, Garrett, are you ready? I am so ready. Have you hit the ready button? I have. Okay, then I don't know who we're waiting on, but let's do this thing. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> that was great. I, I'll tell you what I'm most excited about, Kyle. Nats on Taronda. I want to see a Taronda. Dude, Nats is good on Taronda. There was some amazing stun juggling that her and Uther were able to pull off when I watched them on Battlefield of Eternity. So, you know, maybe not as strong on Haunted Minds because those immortals aren't wailing on people whenever you get that stun off. But we'll see what they can get done. Fast load up here. We are going to have spastic noobs on the blue side and adults with jobs on the red side. Switching it up. Because why game would you keep things consistent? And that in, <laughs> that mystery pick is a Rainer, actually. Brain Pasta, our former butcher, going over to Rainer. Oh, he's interesting. Just, he's trying to gain your favor, Kyle. 
That's it. But Adults of Jobs isn't gaining my favor by doing this ring around the rosy on the main core. <laughs> they must have look a little, at, uh, little tradition there or something. A little pre look at Retro Funk's Butcher, by the way. Just covered in gold. Oh, yeah. That's pretty hot. Looking like uh, the, the scamming aliens at the end of that Futurama movie. The choice of Rainer is interesting. His, he got pretty buffed in this patch. Yeah, his auto attack's going to be incredible. In fact, it's their real only cleanup since they lost the Butcher. Everything else is going to be, you know, control or shields, stuns, and that sort of thing. So Rainer's going to be extremely important to their team comp, but actually Adults of Jobs is moving off and maybe going for a gank bottom. Yeah, and Adults of Jobs don't really have a cleanup. Taronda can do decent auto attack damage, but without their Vala, it'll be interesting to see what happens once the mana's gone. Yeah, I think they're relying very much on this Master Skin Butcher surprise, in fact. I don't think we've ever seen Retro Funk in this tournament switch over to the Butcher, let alone show off that he's been playing it a ton. Yeah. Yeah. So for the so beginning, Muradin's going to be a solid top. You know, Tassadar's not going to be able to muscle him out with Muradin's regeneration, so all attention is here on the bomb. Speaks guy gets a little grab on Randy. Mm. Retrofunk getting stunned. There goes the Taronda <laughs> stun hitting no one. Yeah, in fact, they opted out to remove the Butcher, so they're not going to be stun juggling at all. In fact, they're going with the Lili, which is an interesting choice. Uh, those misses are going to cause Rainer to take a big dip in damage if she can continue to land the wins correctly. Absolutely. Lili, the character you see in every quick match and never in tournament play. It's the weirdest thing. <laughs> yeah, we're seeing black, the Black Arrow tray from Sylvanas really shine here with the, the creep wave in the favor of Spastic Noobs. But they're having to back out because uh, Speaks Speaks took a lot of damage on, on Johanna there. And looks like our Tassadar is actually repositioning, heading down. So it looks like they might be going for a full team wipe if they can manage it. It's oh, a good time for it. Stun on the Johanna. Speaks are having to get out of there. Yeah, she'll get out because she's Johanna. Yep. <laughs> yeah, Retro Funk taking quite a bit of damage. Murden for Adults of Jobs being the only one getting skulls at the moment. Absolutely. Spastic Noobs needs to realize this. Uh, oh, no, here I'm comes Murden. Oh, he's going to pop out the he's top. He's going to pop out. Oh, nope. May maybe oh. not. Back it up, buddy. Yeah, yeah, there was a blizzard there that zoned him out. Butcher needs to get out. He's running for it. Murden's going to tank for him. Randy comes in the back. It's a little grab, so he's going to have to get himself out. Yeah, so there's some real mana starving going on down there. I don't know how those fights are going to go. Absolutely. Adults with jobs are, are now split in the mines, but it looks like they're going to be able to safely meet up as long as Spastic Noobs doesn't cut across the center here and catch Nats. Oh, it's so dangerous being able to see everything that's going on. <laughs> right. These two are, teams are completely blind. You know, adults' jobs can't see past this point. They're just dodging each other. Yeah, they missed. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Absolutely. Now they're now they're leaving. Oh, they're going to see if they can't catch Tinfoil out. And they are. Oh, if Tinfoil manages to escape from this, I'll be amazed. No, that's not happening. Too many stunts for adults with jobs. Interesting takedown. That does that definitely slows their progress on lane push. Right, Brain pasta getting very low. Oh yeah, they're right back in it. Blew up. Despite his give me more talent, there wasn't enough self healing, and Uther was low. And in fact, cornered out here, and he's gonna fall to the butcher. Absolutely. So Spastic Noobs uh, down two. Yeah. Well, with their Rainer just spawned back, but he will have to uh, make the long run back in. So adults with jobs, pretty much having free reign over this over this boss they're tearing it up quick yeah. Yeah. but spastic news did a good job it's not an absurd boss by any means you know 10 skull lead three minute golem it's not going to be too big a deal and now we see what the teams decide to do with the mercenaries on the map absolutely spastic news going for the center mercs first which is a smart move although it's looking like we're going to get a team fight over it yeah, Tassadar popped his sight, so he saw this whole thing move in. They're just going to camp out on that. Can Rainer push him out of the pad, though? The stunt comes in, that Lunar Flare. It looks like Adults of Jobs might be able to steal this. They are! They did. They got and it. They, got, they lost Uther. But. They got two kills. They, they took out Rainer and Uther. Yeah. Dangerous little turnaround for them. Here come the Goms. Oh, in fact, Adults with Jobs going to go take their Giants as well. And Spiska <laughs> taking a look, deciding better of it, going to get out of there. Ooh. Nice little stun there. So 
so now they need to reposition to actually guard against the top but it looks like spastic noobs is going to decide they're going to all group up move out as a single unit with johanna in front in the back there and possibly push with their own boss it's looking it looked like speaks uh, was posturing the head top but it looks like yeah they're going to do a uh, spastic noobs is going to do a four person push bottom to support their golem although it looks like they, they stopped to take out that creep wave by the time they get there their golem's going to be dead yep that's the power of butcher doesn't have to walk anywhere his auto attacks just burning through everything um right now in the talents we're seeing a couple shields on both sides so some emergency talents for sure but otherwise nothing too surprising at the moment lily doing a serpent build Yes. So, adults with jobs, Golem's still pushing. They're going to take their giants on the back of this while they wait for Tyrande to gather up. Uh, Sylvanas in the bottom lane, just barely in range to be getting some XP. Maybe going to wail on a few towers in the background, but the momentum is definitely in adults with jobs' favor for the moment. Yeah, this is absolutely a last game. They're they're showing uh, they're showing energy up front. They they seem to lack in that last game, and maybe that wind is all they needed to get that energy back. All five of adults are bottom, so Sylvanas is not going to be able to make anything happy. And it looks like Speakskin and Brainpasta moving in to support Tinfoil. Yep. They're going to need to hold back. This is quite the push coming from adults with jobs. They've got the Siege Giants, a full creep wave, and four of their heroes all bottom pushing this lane. Interesting to note that this game may have just gotten a lot longer. Both teams have a mule on their on their side. Mm. Oh my. Who picked a... Uh, does Tassadar pick mule? Yep. That's, that's Tassadar it. and Taranda. So Nats for adults with jobs and this is the map to Tassadar do it for that. spastic noobs. When I ever, whenever I go mule, it's always this map. It seems like it's a, it's a real, you know, it can stop that snowball we're talking about. That's because during the mine phase, so many people are out of lane that the mule can get it, all the healing it wants done. Yep. Yeah, we're, we're going to see that mule be a big, a pretty big cut to Tassadar's overall damage. Specia barely getting out of there. Jeez. Yeah, that was a wonderful Lunar Flare by Nats, but just wasn't enough damage. Retro Funk had to back out because Johanna moved too deep into enemy territory. Meanwhile, up top, we have this infinite battle going on between two guys who can't do anything against each other. They <laughs> cannot die. We've got a Muradin with all the two guys that have all the escape and all the hit points in the world. <laughs> It's like the, you yeah. know, what's the, I can't think of the old TV show where they, Oscar and what's his name living together. Odd couple. They're the odd couple up there. Can't get along. Always disagreeing on how to clean the house. Yep. Oh, looks like they might get a kill off on Randy. Down yes, they face. do. Spastic Noobs getting their first kill. Oh, but Butcher going to go in on Brain Pasta. In fact, fully invest himself. He's a little deep, but he still has Toronto heals and he's going to go down. Oh, but so did Rainer. And so did Nats. So, so did Cheese Durant. Chips making a run for it. So Spastic Noobs getting three for one. Kills going off in their favor. But that puts two in the mines for adults with jobs, one for Spastic Noobs. Yeah. Spastic Noobs getting the skull count, moving up. I'm sure adults with jobs are seeing this happen and they're wanting to get into the mines as soon as possible. They are all up now. Now, Spastic Noobs is making a great choice right now to keep the Sylvanas in lane so they can get that level 10 talent. It's going to really help them out in the bottom there if they do have to fight around the final golem. And Adults Jobs needs to do the same, which is why Muradin is still pushing top despite the mines being the place to be. Absolutely. Randy O'Neilly not moving from the Hall of Storms. I wonder what's going on there. Yeah, that's weird. Uh, I think he was the one having a bit of audio trouble when we were getting the games going, so hopefully there isn't anything too serious happening in the background. Okay. Well, now we have uh, four of the team members from Spastic Noobs in the mines, as well as four of the team members from Adults with Jobs, so it is a fair fight at the moment with Lily joining for Adults with Jobs. So now it is a five versus four. They are getting the surround on Spastic Noobs. Oh. Yep, Sylvanas yeah, trying to get in there, but that's a dead Tassadar. Yeah, if I've ever seen one. Brain Pasta trying to escape with his life. He is not going to. Speaks to standing and fighting, but she should get out, get out of there. Out of no. There. Three heroes going down for Spastic Noobs. Wow. And now Adults with Jobs taking a level lead. Wow. But look at the skulls. Absolutely. Is... 58 skulls for Spastic Noobs. So the best Retro Funk can hope for is to just mitigate well, the damage. They'll end up with 40. Yeah, they're only going to be up by, you know, what, 14 skulls or something, even if they don't get a single other skull. So. It's not, it's not an incredible amount, but 
Right, Spastic Noobs is making the right choice here to go get their mercs. Let them have that final golem. No, this is still a very close game. We're looking at the XP. Spastic Noobs is not that far behind. Maybe about a third if we're looking at the bars. Because why show me numbers, Blizzard? They're inflammatory. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, That's Sylvanas a getting a really good push up top while Adults of Jobs is entirely occupied, but they may actually, they're going to walk through the site to get there, but yeah. Butcher sees him. He's going to charge in too late to get the camps, but... They couldn't see them come in. Beautiful use of Shadowstalk by Nats. Yeah, that was great. And Divine Shield going off on Uther himself. Kaldon not looking like he's going to be able to survive this, though. He does go down as well as Johanna. It's also job just ranking, just 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 stacking those kills. Yeah. They weren't quite able to steal, but they it was good enough. I'll take two kills. Yeah, I'll take two kills over a couple of dumb seizures any day. They are, however, not in position to be defending their fort, but to see that mule just doing the best he can to keep the health up on Working on his the way through fort. it. Oh, that mule is just worth its weight in gold. Well, and of course, every tick of the mule gives the fort more ammo to fire. So this is, in fact, an incredible position uh, for spastic news. Yeah, I mean, just look at both forts. If you look at the top fort, it's almost dead with no ammo whatsoever, and that's because the mule is not down. Uh, I'm not sure why. Maybe it's on cooldown. Uh, it is. Yeah, he already popped it. It's uh, still got 25 seconds left on the cooldown for that mule. I'm sure he'll be dropping it on that top fort as soon as he can. All right, Delta Jobs getting in position again. Butcher looking to make the call. Where's Oh, there's the call off of Taronda. They're going to move in completely invisible. Yep. Tassadar, pop your sight. It's going to be too late. Charging in on Brain Pasta. The stun lands on Brain oh, Pasta, too. Wow. Oh, I've easy. never seen a Rainer go down that fast in my life. Speaks yeah. good. Just body blocked in. Cannot escape. That was the good. Uh, that was almost like a one shot. That was incredible. And he's got another charge ready for it. Oh, the oh, Tassadar gets stuck. Oh, that's the most stuck. beautiful Lunar Flare I've ever seen. Great oh, shot, Nats. Yes. Wow. Tassadar, Tassadar was invisible for that. Yeah, that and was it, a judgment call, and it paid off. To it, and he just made the guess that that's about where he'd be. I mean, that's like leading the target in the most blind way. That's amazing that he pulled that off. Absolutely. And now Adulto Job's going to get this bottom fort without... There's there's nothing Spastic Teams can do with two of their heroes down. Their tank is just coming up, but it's too late. No, they're not even wasting the the mana to combat this. It's not worth it. they got to get Space Scout back in front. Here he comes, but Adulto Job's getting out safe. Adults with jobs intuiting that he's back. Well, they know he's back because they can see his timer's done, but they get get the hell out of there. They know when it's time to do that. It's off to get these seizures. It's the right momentum. It's the right rhythm. They're they're basically doing what Spastic Noobs does so well, and they're, they're and they're meeting him with that challenge, and that's that's really good for this team. Interesting to note, Adults with jobs still going with a lot of safety talents for their level 12. Uh, Jaina going with the ice block, or their level 13, that is. The Shrink Ray, a sprint on the Taranda, actually. Well, they're, they're heeding the advice of Han Solo and not getting cocky. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like Raynard being targeted again, doing a little better job staying alive, but not good enough. Caldon having to pop the Divine Shield on himself to stay alive, which should let that Raynard go down. Adulta Jobs just looking fantastic. Another Lunar Failure landing on Uther, which set him up for the kill. Looks like Zeriel's going to be next on their list. As long as just that Tassadar Uther goes, they're still oh. going. Yep. They, uh, down goes Tassadar. They weren't even, I mean, they were barely even a half a level up when that fight started, and they're just dominating the fights without the advantage of being three, four levels up. That was really impressive. Now adults with jobs get to, get to just have full control of the mines with it, at least up one hero for the next 10 seconds. Tassadar is not going to be up for a while, and Uther is just now resurrecting. Yeah, but with Sylvanas and a, a Rainer, they're going to be able to defend their main base really well for a long time. So even if we see something in the range of an 80 Skull Golem, even a 100 Skull Golem, I don't think Spastic Noobs is out by any means. No, that, that, that is not what I was, I was trying to say. Although I will say, after watching last game where it looked like adults with jobs were out for the whole thing and then came back and, and won it seemingly out of nowhere, I don't know how, how confident I am for Spastic Noobs. What happens with adults with jobs when they don't have to come back and they're just really ahead? Yeah, because at the moment they are a full two levels. Ahead. Yeah, they're, they've they've re the last two minutes have been really strong for them. But just keep in mind, this is one of those maps that can suddenly the ebb will flow and snowball like a banana time, which makes no sense at all. That's how serious this is. 
Uh, <laughs> And uh, the, everything can turn. So, I, you know, they have to stay humble, like you said. They can't get cocky because this, this map can get real weird real quick. I want snowball banana time on a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> snowball banana time. Well, I'd say this, you know, Golem might get some work done. But nope, that's a fully healed, all completely ready, ammoed up, mule happy little fort there. Absolutely. Spastic Doom staring down the barrel of a 100 skull golem. And as soon as this next creep wave spawns, a Tulsa Jobs might be sitting on top of a level 17 talent lead. Yep. Oh, well, they're hitting 17 for sure. Oh, well, there's the mule don't, down for Spastic they don't, Noobs. They don't even need the creeps. You get the gate, you get the tower, they're about to cross. Oh, I can't believe they didn't already. Uh, looks like they're waiting for the Butcher to make the call. There's the Invis. There's the Butcher going in. He's got the, the Ferrin yep. Blast all your ready and invulnerable on the Rainer. Here's talent lead. Brainpasta not moving fast enough, though. He is definitely going to go down. Tinfoil joining the fight again. It's really good positioning by Tinfoil on Sylvanas. Stun going off, though. Oh, goes down. Yep. Luna Flare just barely missing Kaldon. Really Sylvanas calling it. That. You got Lily with her freaking ult. Nobody knows what the hell to do with it. That was great. Free Three heroes down for spastic noobs. This is de looking like it is game. Adults with jobs just owning this game, playing perfectly, giving up only three kills to spastic noobs. Yeah, they don't. Just that. that was, yeah, we saw pure domination. Now, on a map of not their choosing, mind you. I was just about to say, yeah, spastic noobs, since they did lose last game, chose haunted mines, and adults with jobs ate them for lunch. Yeah. That's going to be pretty disheartening for Spastic Noobs to have that long of a Cursed Hollow and then lose it on the back of a boss and then to pick their own map and lose it to Adults with Jobs as well with really solid play. They were constantly on them, like you said, 3 to 22. Holy crap. Yeah. So that puts us in a position here where third game could be it. This could spell the end of Spastic yeah, Noobs. Yeah. Adults could, could sweep the series. Yeah. That'd be impressive. It is very demoralizing when you pick a map based on your strong feelings about a strategy you may have as a team or a comp and then have that thrown in your face like that. That is uh, that is not a... That is a thing you need to go in the locker room and yell at each other about a bit before you go back out on the field and we'll see how they do this next round. I would not be surprised to see a, uh, a bit of a wait before the next game. Do you think... So they'll get, they lost, so they get to pick again. Uh, have you ever seen anybody just go ahead and pick the same map again? We're not going to see that here today. There's no way. No, right? Garth was saying that's, no, yeah, it's there's not no the rules. Yeah, there's All no right. repeats allowed. Oh, that's right. Yeah, the rules are right there on my website. You'd think I'd know that. Uh, <laughs> I do that all the time. Don't feel bad. <laughs> no, that's good because, uh, but even if they were, why would they? Like that, that, that right there just proved that they didn't, their strategy was not what it needed to be. And taking a second chance at that at a third and possible last game is not what I would do. So uh, hopefully they pick something they've got either a little bit, uh, I don't know, a little more even chance on or one that they really can truly dominate on. We always, for our entire time in the in the tournament, our best chances were on, uh, what's it called? The Eternal Conflict one, the Diablo one. Battle, Battlefield of Eternity. That's the one. That's That thing, for whatever reason, served us really well. Um, well, until our final game. <laughs> <laughs> where we got beat on it, but but we did some really fun backdoor stuff there. There were things happening in those games that that felt like we had real uh, command over that map, and that was and a lot of those wins were back when that map was pretty fresh and new, and we felt pretty good about being you know having our heads around a map that new. I don't know that we would choose it today because now everyone has their head around it, and we would probably not do as well. But yeah, it's almost like a bunch of WoW players are good at not standing in the poop. Who would think? Yeah, shocking, right? That is a cool map, and I think it worked well for you guys because it was those PvE elements that I think everyone on the team just said, yeah, we, we know how to play this. Maybe MOBAs are new for us, but we can certainly play this kind of game. Yeah, I mean, we we played... It's, it's, it's it, You know, I'd love to look at the averages and say, all right, well, how did all the teams do? And then maybe analyze what kind of players they were. You know, some people are very casual. Some people played a whole bunch, but they're still just sort of middle-of-the-pack kind of players. And then these guys are clearly playing at the top of the tournament. Um, I don't know where we landed. We probably landed somewhere in the middle, um, maybe toward the upper upper part of the of the scale. But man, it sure can just be a blow to your ego when you think you're going in strong because you've just dominated four games in a row or whatever, and you go in there and just get your butt handed to you on a plate. 
Well, not only this, I mean, Spastic Noobs decided to completely change up their thing they do by, you know, getting rid of the Butcher Uther combo and replacing it with a Rainer. It was right. a cool choice for sure. And I mean, putting a Savannah's in there, that's a really good pick on Haunted Minds. But now they said, well, we went off of what we're comfortable with to do something we're not, and we lost that too. Do you change it up again? Or I think you just go back to, you know, your original plan, what you're good at. Yeah, if it were me, I wouldn't try to second guess anything, and I would go with what people are strongest with. And whatever that team comp is, whatever map they pick, uh, whatever they, you know, they're just go with your instincts. Again, I always, I always feel like when I try to second guess instincts in this game, even when I'm solo queuing in this game, if I try to second guess my instincts, I always end up causing at least a problem, if not a loss, uh, or at least feeling that like that was part of it. So this is a chance for them to regroup, think about that, and do what the spastic noobs do best and go with the comp they, they're the most comfortable with. Not just comfortable with, but really strong with and, and be okay with it, you know, and not try to, you know, change it up so much that you're trying to fool the other team when all you're really doing is fooling yourself into thinking you can do something you can't. So they, they just need to group up and get back to what they know. While we're waiting, I just, I just, I just want to uh, I want to cast around some compliments. Scott, when we started this, you were kind of uh, making fun of yourself for your casting abilities. And, sir, I think you've been doing a bang-up job. Oh, well, thank you so much. My my problem isn't so much that I can't talk. I've been, I'm an old-school hat of that now. Like, I can talk the hell out of things. But my biggest problem is remembering all the stupid talents of all the other characters. And you guys are amazing at that. Like, you guys are just, well, there's Lily with her thingamajig. And uh, isn't that great? Because that thing's got a rabbit eye cool down on it. And I... I know what I'm seeing. Like, okay, well, I know I'm, you know, Taranda is doing her stun, but I always, I never remember what it's called. Yeah, I, just, I, I, I really, she, I really appreciate your complimenting of my second monitor. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait, that's not a bad idea. I should have some of these things up too. That'd be a good idea. I'd be able to keep up. But no, when I, I mean, one of the, I mean, I have to, if I'm being honest, one of my favorite things about, doing this sort of thing is that we can just wing it and be idiots or at least i can um and you guys can do the true technical calling and so it's been it's turned out nice like both these games have been really fun to call and um i'm glad you guys are doing it i'm glad everybody everybody who's been involved from everything from the planning and the gorath stages and all that stuff right up through ex execution the players the team captains and then you guys and others who have been streaming and casting everybody's just been killing it and it's all just been for fun nobody's making money Nobody's, you know, this isn't launching a bunch of hot new careers. Everybody's just got this great thing happening and everyone's jiving together and we haven't had any big problems and it's just awesome. And you guys are a big part of that. I would argue instead of uh, launching hot new careers, it's maintaining cold, old fart careers. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I have a recently microwave careers. I'll go with yeah. that. <laughs> we're, like, we're like a heating lamp at Taco Bell. It's, it's yeah. Taco, it's fun. Yeah. Stay away from that the cheese on the edge that just becomes plastic-like. Don't eat that. <laughs> That's well said. Well, I've gotten word from the teams that they are taking a five-minute break. So if we want to do like, this would be the time for it. Otherwise, it uh, looks like we're going to be rejoining these matches at about uh, 2.13 Pacific time. All right, cool. The only, uh, the only hard, I know uh, if this game goes five games, uh, people will likely lose me as a commentator because I have a... Uh, uh, actually a paid gig I have to do it for for the NVIDIA stream but I am hoping well I mean I don't want to say this because I don't want Spastic News to feel like I'm against them or anything but you know I'm hoping if this thing's like a three maybe four game well it would never be four would it no well, it could be four it absolutely could be four yeah. if uh, Spastic News could win this next one but if it, uh, adults with jobs now only have to win one more I guess that's all I'm I guess what I'm saying is I don't want to miss it. <laughs> so I'm hoping that whatever happens happens in the next 45 minutes so we can uh I, I can re I can respect that. I don't think anyone can uh can say anything negative about you for wanting to witness whatever is about to happen. Yeah, I'm pretty stoked about it. Yeah. So I mean that's again something we haven't really mentioned. If if Spastic Noobs wants to win this, they have to sweep the series from here on out. They have to win the next three games in a row. Yeah. Uh it is that's that's quite the weight on their shoulders, and they I know they can do it. We watched that first game; they almost had it. It was so close. Yeah, no, they did. I, I mean, I would maintain they did have it, and they didn't. They just couldn't get it to the. I mean, they the one. It's such a it's such a hard balance because at the end of the game, when you've got really everything on the line, and death counts are sixty seconds, sixty five seconds, whatever it is. 
on both sides of the of the of the of the teams or both sides of the match one team fight and it's all it takes to turn the entire thing on its head uh, or one one team fight I should say and that's what they were faced with that's why they lost so there's this balance between wanting to rush in and win a team fight at that stage but also you want to be a little hesitant and not start every team fight you can think of or else you're going to be the one losing it it's just such a crucial moment in every match and they lost that one and there's just no other way around it you know all hail to them but they just that is that was their game to win and they lost it we haven't talked very much about uh, these games in reference to the meta that a lot of us are, are ex probably experiencing uh, playing this game on our own time. I am surprised by the lack of Zero Tool. Yeah, he um, supposedly, I mean, if you look at the meta and listen to the forums and ask people about it, he is, uh, and even listen to the devs, they think he is OP right now and does not see him in any of these games. And honestly, most of the games we played in the tournament, he just wasn't much of a show. Uh, at any of those games. And by contrast, you're seeing people like Tassadar show up who, you know, by all, again, if you're going off meta or you're going off win rates or you're going off with the communities all chattering about, you think that he's near the bottom of the of the list. And yet here he is again and, you know, doing good work. So I, I don't know why there's that disparity. And there are times where I just think, I mean, obviously, if people are going to be playing this game for fun, they should play what they want to play. But when it comes to competitive play, the meta is real, and what people are finding out about these characters and their compositions is 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 a, a real thing, and there's a real threat there, and you can't just dink around. You gotta you gotta try to maximize on that and play to everybody's best skills and have the best character combos and work together on the on the play field and everything else. That all makes sense. It's just I, I sometimes it what I see people do when I see them do amazing things, it seems to fly in the face of the current meta, and that's weird to me. Yeah, looks like the game is starting. Oh so we're going into possibly our final game between Spastic Noobs and Adults with Jobs if Adults with Jobs take it on Tomb of the Spider Queen. Oh, yep. Lord. It's, it's going to be the map picked by Spastic Noobs since they lost the last one. Uh, looks like well, we couldn't see that middle mystery player again, but looks like we don't really have any change-ups. In fact, going back to originals all around. Yeah. Well, like we expected, right? Yes. Little, yeah. I think that the, this is a strong one for them. Um... It was a strong one for everyone who picked this in the tournament all along. So, uh, just yeah, this is just going to be a fight fest. This is what this map is for. It's why it was invented. <laughs> it's all about make your buddy, make your dude across the way lose his gems. It's about switching lanes in no time flat. I'm a little surprised to not see too many sort of uh, blinky characters in here that can kind of jump from one end to the other like you would see with um, uh, Flying Eagle Man. What's his name? Flying okay. Eagle Man? Uh, uh, Falstad. Falstad, you know. <laughs> Name that character. <laughs> That'd be a, that would be a griffin, sir. Get your fantasy creatures <laughs> correct, please. Uh, looks like Spastic Noobs is spawning in on the blue side on the left side of the uh, Tomb of the Spider Queen, and Adults with Jobs will be taking up the red pants again on the right side. Ooh, they're all in line. Well, well rehearsed. Yeah, we are, we are seeing we're back to the same team compositions that we saw in the very first game. The greatest hits here. Now, it's important to note that to this is the map for Spastic Noobs and the Uther-Butcher combo. This is where they've done it the most, uh, had the most success on it. And in fact, looks like they're going straight into those lanes like we talked about in their very first game. Johanna up top, Tassadar in the mid, and then uh, Jaina going to be the solo here as Brain Pasta and Uther make their way around. And meanwhile, again, it's also with this perfect sort of little mini comp down at the bottom with an auto attack Vala and a Naz up top. In uh, in regular gameplay, I, s I sure see a lot of all assassin uh, comps on this map, and um, I always find that very interesting. What's and what's interesting about that is I see that in some quick matches where you're not in charge at all about picking your map, or even Hero League for that matter. And so these things are coming up randomly, and yet they're just all. I mean, I guess the strategy of all assassin all the time is still a pretty viable thing to do. Sure, and on this map, it's really about maintaining the kills on the spiders and getting those gems. And despite specialists, you would think having that role, a bunch of assassins can clear a lane just as fast. Yeah, and the way Cheesy. they gank, just swarm and gank, is just an insane experience when you're facing that. Cheesy Chips and Retrofunk right now being the, the picture you see next to patients in the dictionary, just <laughs> waiting for a gank to be set up for them. 
Yeah, technically, I mean, any doubled XP isn't going to help out your team. Just because they're in lane soaking doesn't mean, you know, they're getting more than what Archer's doing for them. So they're not taking any detriments from being in there, but <laughs> boy, they're waiting a while. Yeah, Cheesy Chips and Retro Funk were my favorite jazz musicians of the 1960s. So I <laughs> see they're still kicking it. New album, all that. Oh, was it? I was going to say, that's, that's, a, that's my cover band of only 90s chip commercial songs. <laughs> wow. Can you give us a, I mean, what constitutes a 90s chip commercial? Well, there's a team fight going on, so I'm not going to continue this joke. All right. Well, uh, Retro Funk saying. taking a lot of damage. He's going to escape, though. Brain Pasta now taking damage in return. And uh, no one's going to die, because Tacitar can escape. Brain Pasta got healed up. Yeah, we got to... <laughs> Brain Pasta is going to keep attempting to turn in those gems and being denied because those two are not leaving. That is their that is their smokestack. There are many like it, but that one is theirs. Yeah. Right, and Tassadar can pop his side at any point and reveal this upper turn in. So Nats, I think, is going to sneak it in here. Nope, Johanna comes down and interrupts him. Now we're seeing uh, Adults of Jobs get a little aggressive in the middle lane with Cheese Chips waiting, hopefully, to snag herself a, uh, a Tassadar. Yeah. And the thing is, on the back of this, I mean, Delta Jobs going into this very confident. They've won the last two games, and they know if that in the first couple minutes they can really throw Spastic Noobs off with a good gank, they could just win the morality game. Not morality, but a confidence game. Confidence game, there you <laughs> go. It's going to get real dirty in here. <laughs> yeah. And who defines morals anyway? <laughs> <laughs> well, if it's in this world and if it's Asmodan, we all have some horrors to endure. That's true. But I I pray at the at the Church of Tassadar. So, uh, oh okay. So it's uh, yeah. He, he's got his own ways. Yeah, and Tara Tara Dune. Dune. Yeah, there you I go. clearly am very biased towards him. I love freaking Tassadar. So I'll admit it. Someone in the chat room says that oh my gosh, Caster's actually rooting for another or one of the teams. I don't have any of us rooted for a team. I don't think we have, have we? I think we've been impressed with Adults with Jobs comeback and kind of been you know following them a little closer. But that's just because Spastic Noobs has been dominating this entire tournament. Oh, from yeah. the beginning. It's yeah. just because we have eyeballs, Kyle, and we are experiencing some amazing play. Down goes Adults Butcher. Jobs getting a second kill off on Butcher there. And Uther. Yeah, gank, team, oh, yes. gank Team uh, 6 is dead. Yep, they got first blood and a second kill right off the bat. Yep. We'll be back. So now, now they're getting the hand in all their gems to their heart's content. We're six and six straight up on levels, so uh, everybody kind of get our and... get our first web weaver descent on uh, adults with jobs. Yeah, this is four minutes though, and with a butcher, these are going to get burned through pretty darn quickly. So I don't think this is going to be a tragic event for spastic noobs at all. In fact, they're all gathering up in the mid, thinking they can uh, adults with jobs. That is to push with theirs, and meanwhile, spastic noobs going to push the bottom. I would rec I would I would say that the first wave of spider or web weavers is usually uh, it's a mental game. It doesn't seem to be. I mean, you can go push with it hard and you can do some damage and stuff, but it's usually not a game changer or a game maker. But it can get to you, just like any of these. Anytime somebody gets the mechanic of the map off first, it's just a little demoralizing. Right. You have the same thing in any uh, same thing on Battlefield Eternity. The first immortal is never scary at all. It, no. it, you're just mad you lost it because you lost space, uh, and maybe you really wanted those health orbs. But uh, on a, really, it's not that not that scary. I'll tell you what is scary is the five five player push right now by Adults with Jobs in bottom lane. But Spastic Noobs are coming down to descend on them. Yeah, they gotta wait for that Johanna to get in position. Archer might be a little far out, but Adults with Jobs is gonna go sit in the smoke stacks and wait for him. And everyone kind of dodges everybody. Yeah. Absolutely. We did not. I, oh, I here we go. It's to too late. Oh, it's happening in the middle lane. Speaks of getting a fantastic stun there on everyone. Retro Funk going to barely escape with his life. Yeah. And that ends the Spider Queen. So we're going to see everyone kind of return to their lanes. And Spastic Noob, since they did get pushed out, that means they're going to have a lot of gems on the back of it. And they're trying to get it turned in. see a, meet, a mini fight around this bottom egg turn in. Yeah, Tassadar and Nazebo just showed up. Uh, well, on Johanna isn't going to be awful, but ow! That's oh, a actually, lot of damage. Actually, no, it is going to be awful Holy because Johanna is now dead. Yeah, you corner her. She's not your first squishy target, but if you get her body blocked like that, take her down. Might as well. Yeah. I mean, it's so funny. You get into uh, regular matches and everyone, everybody wants to target Johanna. I'm like, don't do that. She's just going to live. 
all this time. Gorath's always yelling at us. Guys, don't target that freaking chick. You want to get, <laughs> you want the squishies first, and he's totally right, but there are these times where you can get her squeezed in there like the white on an Oreo and just <laughs> take her out. <laughs> don't target the mohawk. Don't target it. <laughs> That floppy hawk is made out of titanium. She's really great. There's the whole Diablo event, I think, has been a big hit. It's been really wonderful. I'm looking forward to a StarCraft one next, I hope. Yeah. I, I mean, hope. That's got to be it. That has to be it. That has to be what they're doing. A brief Rexar interlude, I'm sure, but oh, yeah, bring on the StarCraft. Yeah, absolutely. The Delta Jobs pushing the middle lane with three heroes again. Blue Web Weavers on their way now. Yeah, Spastic Snoobs getting their first Web Weaver. That's good momentum for them. If they can take a fort, they can get back up to 10. Uh, the big problem is going to be adults with jobs swooping down and taking out spastic noobs from the side here. In and fact, the clairvoyance heroics. reveals them, so, you know, yep. no sneak up. They've got heroics, uh, and they and noobs don't, so they're not far from it, but they got to be careful here. Spastic noobs looking like they're going, they want to rotate mid and push it out. This is the lane where their web weaver is starting back the furthest. Yeah. <laughs> But that's gems for them, and I think that's what they're most concerned about. They have 24 on tinfoil. They're, I mean, if they can kind of push with them and play safe, they could get another turn in on the back of this, and they want to avoid a fight at all costs. Until Absolutely. now. Tinfoil, by the way, is Jaina, if you haven't been watching. That is the scariest hero to have all of your gems on. Yeah. Well, there's, like, there's murky in the game, but yes. That's I'm in, in this game. Like Locking your door with spaghetti noodles that are cooked. It's ridiculous. She is so squishy. With with Spastic's current composition, Jane is definitely not the hero you want to have gems on. It's almost better if she could self-destruct around her playmates and have them pick it all up and, and wait for her to spawn. <laughs> I wish but that it, became the official term, playmates. <laughs> playmates of the storm. I'm not sure whether that's like a my first toy or they should be wearing uh, corsets and bunny ears. Could be one or the other. You choose your own adventure. Garrett. That skin's coming for Jaina. You know it. it's going to make a fortune. <laughs> oh, man. She is really great these days. So much fun to play Jaina, but, man, she's just made a mush. We've got two interesting talent choices for the level 10s. Uh, Nazebo again, going for the Ravenous Spirit. We saw it work out well for them. And then on the side of the Spastic Noobs, Jaina actually went Bring a Frost. Wow. Both teams go, looking like they're going to get... Actually, no. Adults with jobs seeing all five spastic cubes in the bottom lane. Now is the time to take the boss. Yeah. Oh, and they're burning through it so fast. This is going to work great for them. Uh, adults with jobs figures it out, you know, mentally. They panic a little bit. Do we take these bottom mercs too? No, we need to get top. What are we doing? Yeah, they're... They're they're, they're having a moment here. This top four is going to go down, and that boss is going to keep walking. Spastic News deciding to take those bottom mercs, but I think they may have uh, they may have hesitated too long. Yeah, the, it's not so much that they didn't that they got the mercs; it's how long they took to decide to go ahead and get them. Yeah, they are completely out of position now. I don't see any reason why adults with jobs are not going to be able to get this inner keep down and get catapults pushing top lane ten minutes into the game if if this happens. Okay, uh, they all hearth back. Right, it could be a little confusing from our end. What I saw was Spastic Noobs had too many gems to actually go engage that. If they died, they mm -hmm. would have never gotten this push out, so they had to make a choice. And no. it could have been the right one. There's a great Ring of Frost. Oh, Brain Pasta taking so much damage, getting caught in the Ring of Frost. Now Kaldon taking that. Oh, down goes Kaldon from the Ravaging Spirit. Oh, my. Ooh. As well as Tassadar also going down on Spastic Noobs' side. So Adults with Jobs are going to secure this keep. Retrofunk, very low, but does have the mana. Just barely, though. And he ha his Holy Light is off of cooldown if he wants it. He will be able to heal himself, but he's being a very, very good support and making sure his uh, his damage dealers aren't going to need it before himself. Well, and if he dies, there's no one to heal except for other people. So a good choice there, just in case he got ganked. Meanwhile, though, we do have Spastic Noobs Spiders, along with those mercs they took, actually doing a lot of damage together. Yeah, but it is not going to be enough to get that bottom keep, which means the Spastic Noobs are going to now have to deal with Catapults long before Adults with Jobs are really going to have to worry about them. Yeah, for sure. With the Jane and the Butcher, they can clean up one lane pretty easily. And looks like they might actually take the middle fort. Yeah, they'll get that fort. That'll be a nice chunk of XP in their favor. 
help catch them back up. They are a full level behind Adults with Jobs. Oh, and Adults with Jobs just riding on their horses behind walking <laughs> heroes. <laughs> yeah, they decided to drop the, uh, Ugh, the Hearthstone cards. Oh, great little charge by Brain Pasta, though. Might be able to get Uther Falls. Randy's in the back, though. Randy's very low. I s Butcher, you can see Butcher just wants. <laughs> Great zombie <laughs> wall. Wants Vala so bad. Oh, but doesn't get Vala. Two kills, three kills for adults with jobs. That is a, th a four for one now. Mm -hmm. I guess I shouldn't be surprised. I'm a little surprised that our Vala here did not go, um, didn't go uh, stun with her, with her ult, with her heroic. That that to me seems like in a, in a team composition like this, we're all communicating. Um, I just find like that's a, just a better pick. Rain of Vengeance is, is really nice, especially when, when combined with something like Ravaging Spirit. Um, and you've also got Uther to help set you up so you can yeah. chain stuns. However, it's just so much damage from Strafe. Yeah, that's and true. you're allowed to stay more mobile. And uh, we really looking at uh, looking at the comp of Spastic Noobs. The only person stun you're really afraid of knocking you out of it is Uther. Right, and you know, uh, Jaina, you know, deciding to. Oh no, that's on the wrong team. Never mind. She went Frost Elemental on the adults with job side, so they are missing that's... out on a couple stuns, but it's working out well for them all the same. <laughs> Gorat's a big fan of Ring of Frost as a pick, by the way. Um, every time there's a uh, that that choice comes up, and we communicate as a team about what we were going at level ten, he always goes in favor of Ring of Frost for the mage. This most recent patch made it an even more sound pick. Yep. Look at look, look at adults with jobs just waiting. This just is like, dangerous. And oh, Spastic Noobs knows they have a four oh, here. It looks like Uther's gonna spy him. And they're just gonna walk out. Retrofunk yeah. having to take the long way though, and in fact, Brain Pasta gonna charge in on him. There's plenty of people behind there though. Butcher furnace blast going off. Jaina using the ice block to get out of there. Invulnerable Butcher continue to go. Invulnerable Tassadar in the background, but Nazivo using that Ravaging Spirit actually gonna clean up and Brain Pasta falls. And Uther's walking, Johanna's walking, Cheese Chip's running. I have never seen Ravaging Spirit pay off as well as it is for adults with jobs. This I is barely, just I barely insane. See it. I barely Down see it. goes Johanna. It's, it's never even picked. No one ever picks it. No. No, yeah. it has not been popular since the alpha days. Yeah, I'm blown away by this. Never even seen it work successfully until tonight. It's a great That's, choice. That was great. It's Nazebo. I've been impressive all day. I mean, he's not the top damage this game, or actually, no. Yeah, no, 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 he's not, but but barely. Vala only 3,000 damage ahead of him at the moment. I'm always impressed when a, when a um, specialist is that high in, in the damage numbers. Jaina for Spastic Noobs, though, totally carrying her weight. Top, top damage meters of anyone on any team at the moment. Yeah. Adults with jobs just getting to turn in all the gems they care to. With Spastic Noobs, you know, just coming back from the graveyard, deciding to take their mercs. And actually, they don't have enough yet, so they're... And as pushed out as they are, they have no choice but to... Hey, why, let's take boss guys. They're all stuck defending the base. Uh, we'll let them push out the bottom lane while we take top. And in fact, Spastic Noobs is not in a position to make anything happen on the back of this. And in no, fact, they... in their top lane, they're going to get barreled down by two catapults. Yeah, noobs still need to secure their level 16 talents. It would be really scary to go in and engage adults with jobs at the moment. But there's always that chance of the boss that you can just swing it wildly in the back. People get stuck in the stun or something. That's so. true. That's true. If you're attacking from the outside, I mean, their Jaina and their Tassadar could do some poke damage. All right. Uh, they well, decided not to. And that's a little out of position. Could be a oh, good call get, for them. Oh, Butcher just getting targeted. Oh, but a beautiful Divine Shield by Spastic Noobs. Yeah. Going after Randy Nats, really though. Completely a moon in the oh. back. There goes Butcher. There goes Uther. This, we might be looking at the end of the game here. We are 15 minutes in. The res timers are long, and there is a boss on the core. <laughs> They've got a Jaina left. She's not, she cannot withstand it. This could be it. I'm, I'm surprised that we're not seeing Archer and Nats charge the core. Yeah, why are they not hamming it? And they've still got 20 seconds of only one hero to worry about. Well, we could actually have some mind games going on here. It looks like the uh, the team captain was getting a bit uh, distraught on Spastic Noob size. Tinfoil saying, no, let's let's yeah, keep it going. Damn it, they're doing it. Uh, this is going to be game, which means Adults with Jobs takes the Apes. first ever Heroes of the Pants finals with yep. a 3-0 sweep. Yep. 
They, they tore that up. It looked like they were starting on the back foot. Spastic Noobs had a beautiful game one, and Adults with Jobs came back to secure that win. And then it looked like they just coasted through two more games picked by their opponents. Yeah. Just well played by Adults with Jobs. Yeah, that was incredible. Uh, that, uh, wow. That Jane is numbers. Yeah, let's take a moment to say MVP to tinfoil on Jaina for continuing to maintain some really high numbers, both siege and hero damage, despite yeah. uh, being on the losing side of that match. Yeah, the irony there is wasn't part of many takedowns, but the, the hero damage more than enough to contribute a really important part of that game. But ultimately, it is kind of this XP lead that got them so far ahead, 4 to 19. Uh, Adults of Jobs, the solid comp, winning out against some more cheesy, spastic noobs that just surprised about every single person in the tournament. Uh, I, I feel slightly responsible for uh, for casting all these games and talking infinitely about the Butcher Uther combo. Yeah. Well, do you, I, it seems like that's also meta wise. There, there's talk of those two chuckleheads all the time. I'm hearing them everywhere now, um, and I see a lot of that comp in just standard gameplay. So I. It, Yes, you may have you may have contributed to some of these teams going. Oh, we should investigate that, but I have a feeling they may have uh, they may have done that regardless. It makes me wonder how much research adults with jobs did prior to this game on spastic news because they did a fantastic job of roaming themselves and making sure that that Caldon and Brain Pasta couldn't just roam and get kills with impunity. Yeah. Yeah, in that first game, you really saw what made spastic noobs big players here which was their their roaming abilities in that first game and their ability to get every merc camp at all the right times and to be able to dominate the timing and the rhythm of that game and uh i feel like adults with jobs just had to acclimate and once they did they were they were kind of unstoppable those last two games this is such a great finals i loved the the non-meta picks we were seeing no kale thosses no zero tools yeah it was. It, this was just a blast to cast. If, yeah, if how much really fun is this, guys? So here's the deal. We're going to, uh, from my, oh, I should probably put this back on, and I know Gorath's being added. Uh, when he gets on here, I'll, I'll make a point. There he is. Uh, hey, guys. So we, we are really happy with the way the entire thing went. Um, and I think that there are a lot of people have asked, are you going to do it again? And the answer is yes. Uh, we don't know when exactly. There may be something between this and that, but we're going to, apply some changes, get the community involved, and um, see see about doing this again and making it even more rad the second time around. Uh, Gorath, what's your take on the match, dude? What would you think of all that, all those three um, games? Those three games were really entertaining to watch, partially because I know the history of both teams. I know that Adults with Jobs uh, deserved their 3-0 victory for playing really well, but Spastic Noobs are also a really good team. I think they were pretty much undefeated up until this series. Uh, so um, kind of heartbreaking for them, but we all, all 31 other teams know the, the pain of getting knocked out of the tournament, and it seems it was their turn this time. It was really entertaining to watch. Yeah, and um, huge grats to them. They win. Uh, let me pull these up so I can remind them what they win again. This team, everybody on the team gets 10 bucks toward uh, Battle.net, which means they can all get a free hero, essentially. They all get an instance mug. They get a choice of a print from the uh, store, which uh, I'll sign as well, and... Maybe some extra stuff we'll throw in, a little extra extra bonus loot that they're not even aware of, and that'll go to everybody on the team. So good job to that team. They just nailed it, and I still don't believe they're adults with jobs. I think they're adults with jobs that are short, and they come home and play a lot of heroes. That's <laughs> <laughs> adults with playmates of the storm jobs. He, he outsourced it this week. He said, freshman English, uh, this week, right on how to counter butchers and uthers roaming together. <laughs> just, oh, that's amazing. Kind of farmed out his research and... Got some yeah. good ideas. Kyle with his tinfoil hat conspiracy theories. <laughs> like it. Yeah. So um, I know there's probably a lot of people who participated in the tournament that are in the chat room watching the live stream right now. Uh, we're going to send out a survey, Scott, um, you know, because we made decisions about how the tournament was going to play out. But I'd like to hear from the community about what they'd like to see. Would they prefer draft? Do they want to do open picks again? Things like that. So that's something that we're going to be sending out shortly. And it's for team captains as well as participants and uh, people thinking about participating should all fill out that survey because we'd like to do another one. Right, Scott? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So once you've had a chance to kind of weigh in on what you think, we'll start building something that makes the most sense based on what we've learned and keep all the good stuff and decide if there's anything that needs to be changed. And I, I like the idea of keeping everybody in the know as we go. So lots of updates coming 
Uh, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll try to address some of the stuff that was hard about scheduling and things like that, make a, a more tighter uh, sort of time frame on, on the schedule and all of that to the best of our ability. And we also want to make sure we keep it very open to who wants to play and we don't want to block people out and make it hard for, you know, some people to play while making it too easy for others and, you know, keep this thing a big open community thing, but, you know, tighten it up a little bit as well. So, uh, but in the end, I don't know that I could be any happier. It was freaking rad. The whole thing was great. It was a great tournament. Those finals, uh, again, just I can't believe how how entertaining that was and how good those games were. I mean, I, I, for me, it's, for me personally, I think that first game takes the cake. That was one of the most impressive comebacks I have seen in Heroes. Yeah, for sure. I've only been a part of a couple of matches where I could say it. You know, you've been a part of a team where it felt like that to come back. Uh, and so when you get to see it in this kind of arrangement, in a casted environment, and we all were kind of participants in it, that's just a, an amazing thing. And I don't know, props to Blizzard for making a game where moments like that can shine and, you know, we get a chance to cover it. It's been just a total blast to do this. So I know you guys, you're just thinking about it, certainly excited about the next one. What time frame are you thinking for the next Heroes of the Pants? So we were thinking like winter, right, Gorath? Something like that? Like uh, um, fall or or something? That's, That's something we need to figure out. August is almost done, so... That could be just around the corner. We haven't really picked dates yet. I really want to get information from the community about whether they prefer draft or whether, you know, a lot of different things. Should we do theme weeks where, you know, in a given week it's like only specialist matches, things like that that we can do for fun that you can't do in an official tournament but that we could do? Sure. So um, I'm interested in hearing all kinds of ideas. So once we get that information, which hopefully won't take too long, I'm thinking in the fall, maybe September, October. Like, I don't... Could be yeah. real quick, yeah. I, I think I think you should wait until exactly one week after BlizzCon. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and we need Garrett and Kyle in this tournament. I don't yeah. know That's, how that happened. Yeah. You I'm guys not, are supposed to be in the tournament. Yeah, because uh, I was missing half of July, and there was just no way I would have been able to make my summer. Games. And that's the thing; that's an important note to make. Summer kind of sucks for this, and I think everybody did a killer job. But despite the fact that summer was here, there's all the vacations people are stuck doing. People are out of school and have other things going on. They're outside where they should be. Uh, so as things start to cool down, the leaves start to change color, and a little bit of snow hits the mountain peaks, things are going to be different. That's when people are home playing video games, and, and I think we'll have even a better turnout than we did this time. Well, great. Well, thanks again, guys, for having me. This was an absolute blast. Totally fun, man. Uh, um, yeah, I want to say a big thank you to Kyle for... Uh, you know, putting together a lot of the matches, too. He's been, like, I don't know how to do the casting thing, so I'm like, you know. And also thanks to Roe and Mick Montgomery. They did a few games as well. Totally didn't ask for it. They just wanted to do it. But mainly, Kyle, especially for these playoff games, you've kind of been the man in terms of, yep, I'm going to do it. And I'm like, how do you do it? How does this work? And you're like, don't worry, I've got it. (laughs) Turn on the stream and start talking a lot, pretty much. I mean, I wish I wish Kyle's would appear in other facets of my life to just take care of things so amazingly without me having to put any input. You know? <laughs> like, where are you, other Kyles? Yeah. I'll, I'll be the chat but, pop-up box on your website there. <laughs> we ran this whole thing like the British government. I'm like the queen. I have no real power. I have some nice ideas. So I came out and said, yes, please make a tournament. And then I walked away. <laughs> Gorath's like prime minister. He's actually in the trenches doing the work. He got that work done. We had a lot of other people, John and other people volunteering. And then you guys on the back end with doing streaming and everything. It's just everybody pitched in in the ways they, they were best used and that's my favorite thing about all this is it just kind of fell together like a big puzzle and that's my like favorite white and an oreo getting yep. squished like together. white <laughs> squished <and> an oreo <laughs> like snowball banana town <laughs> like a zombie circle jerk <laughs> you only got three out of me today that's per- that's kind of a record on the low end so like a poop standing angered flustered goose there it is <laughs> that's the one <laughs> Cool. Well, I'm uh, I'm off to the Nvidia channel. Thank you everybody for watching us, and uh, we're gonna play Heroes later. In fact, so delightful. Watch, watch some of that, I guess, later. See you guys. <laughs> Sweet. The patented Scott sign off in the middle of a syllable. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I didn't hear Kyle end the show. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's got the leave him wanting more going on. I stick around a little too long.
In yeah. fact, on that, uh, let's take the stream down. So, everyone, thank you for hanging out. Uh, awesome game state. Congratulations again to Adult Switch Jobs, Spastic Noobs. Great representation. You guys did amazing throughout this ent entire tournament. It was a pleasure to watch you. Gora, thank you for inviting me to cast these games. Garrett, thank you for joining me for this. I've been wanting you to join me for these. So thank you so much for coming. And uh, everyone, have a good one. All right. Thanks, thanks Kyle. Thank you, Garrett.